Hello and welcome to NARC Live on Wednesday the 10th of February. Coming to you from a very cold... I don't know, it's pretty warm in here actually. Well it's a warm issue here. <laughs> Norfolk on the east coast of England. I know lots of you watch from different places but it's very cold here. Uh, with Tammy M0TC of course. Hello. And from me David G7RP. Good evening, great to see you. On tonight's show... It's an unboxing interactive special, and we have lots of your reveals later. We look at your snow pictures from around the county and further afield. And we find out who works from a shack like this. We've had some guesses. Some are different, some are right, some are wrong maybe. If you'd like to guess and you haven't had a chance to drop us an email, you can drop us a, a message now on BATC or Facebook, and we'll read that out when we go into them. Now I must say, we have got a fantastic show for you tonight and that's not in any part due to Tammy and me, it's down to you because you guys have not only sent us lots of things to look at for unboxing, but in fact we've had some wonderful pictures in the last 24 hours from people around Norfolk and even a, well, it was a wonderful video to see and everything. But all will become clear later, so stay tuned it, here. It could be like a Ken Dodd show tonight. It is, yes, <laughs> it's a lock-in job. So make sure you've got a good drink to hand and everything because we've got lots to cover. Um, but we're not going to put any limit on it if, and I hope you aren't either. I hope you have a lot of fun. It's, it's all down to you guys for sending this stuff to us. So we're not going to put any limits on it and hopefully you'll have fun tonight like we will. So let's first talk about the snow then. OK, uh, if you do live in this part of the country and in a lot of other parts as well, I think especially further south, Suffolk and, and other parts of the country as well, you've had quite a lot of snow in the last few days. And um, I just thought it was a PS yesterday on the newsletter that I put, if you've got any pictures of snow and things that have been happening near you, send it to us. And you've, you've done wonders. You've sent us lots of stuff as well. So let's start with, uh, just because this is the order they came in actually, Steve G3EVA. I'm going to tell you where the people are from as well, so we can get a picture of what Norfolk looks like. Uh, Steve's in Old Catton, and um, he sent us these pictures. Look at that. That's Cody. Oh, a little video there as well. Covered in snow. Covered in snow. They really enjoy it, <clears> don't they? <laughs> Our cat's not so sure. But Now, what's this about, I hear you say? Have we got the pictures mixed up? Well, what Steve said was that the whisk is a way of removing snow from Cody's legs and paws. It works superbly, he said. Look at this. Now, this is the bit that worries me. Then he, then he says, full stop, Roy G3ZIG has made his own from fencing wire. Now, I'm not sure what that is. Is that <laughs> to get rid of snow off Roy's legs or his dog's legs or what? I don't know. Maybe we'll ask Steve in a little while. Actually, we haven't, we haven't said hello to everybody at home. Oh, no. We ought to do no, that, don't we? So before we move anywhere, let's have, have a look and see everybody at home. And let's give us a wave. How many have we got there? Yeah, we have got, let me see, four, seven, ten. Ten people looking at home on uh, GoToMeeting. And we've got how many people? We've got 36 watching us on Facebook and 26 watching us on BETC. So loads of you here, which is brilliant. But good evening to you guys at home. We'll be coming to you later as well. If you've got, by the way, when it comes to any snow stories or anything, if you've got anything like that, just put your hand up, wave furiously, and Sonny will let us know and um, we'll come to you throughout the evening. But really good that you joined us here. So we've got some lovely stuff to share with you tonight. Next, uh, we got this picture from uh, Jeanne. M7 JPC. He's out at Scarning, sort of west, sort of of the uh, of Norwich. Um, as I say, he says, "My little garden. Can you see how much snow is on the garden tables? That's pretty. That's pretty deep, there, Fair isn't bit, it? Yeah. And yet the, and yet the, the fences have got nothing on them. He said the wire antenna's down due to the last storm. So thanks for sending us that, Jan. And now going further west to the county." Ted, G4OZG, is in Gay Gaywood, which is near Kings Lynn. And he says, I've been going for a walk almost every morning for nearly a year. Always starting soon after 6am. 6am? What time's and, that? Oh, it's pretty early. And, and usually about three miles. This is to avoid other people. I only saw one other person on foot this morning. I see it's becoming a popular thing to do, according to the news. Walking in the dark, that is. We live in Gaywood, Kings Lynn, and the riverbank, sports fields, cycleways are only a five minute walk away from the house. I've attached a couple of po photos taken before dawn on my walks and another taken this morning of our garden. Also, the mini number plate is of radio interest to me, perhaps. I blanked mm. out the number plate. Oh, of course I shouldn't you did. have done that. No, sorry about that, Ted. <laughs> 
we do do this normally. We blank out number plates because we think people prefer to. Anyway, sorry, that had got, I know, because I looked at it, it has got the OZG uh, in the uh, call sign. Uh, our middle daughter and husband were walking in the snow in the Surrey Hills. They do live there in January. And when they got back to the car, it looked like this. Hooray for all weather tyres as it saved the day on the hills going home. And he says also that photos were all taken by his uh, camera phone. He left his DSLR at home. They are amazing now, aren't they? Some of these cameras that I must admit, we hardly ever use our SLR, do we? Mm. Now, and very near to um, Ted and also uh, in the King's Den Club as well, was Mike M0XXM and Becky M0XXR. They're from, uh, say, King's Lynn. Clearly, um, it, he says this doesn't tick the box for snow in Norfolk. It was Norway a couple of years ago. I think first we've got a picture, though, of his... Oh, there we are. Yeah, there we are. There's a picture of a couple of years ago. I was going to say that would have shocked people if that was in Norfolk. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> the Northern Lights, of course. I'm sure you know what they are. But that is a stunning picture. Because we've actually seen it ourselves. We've, we have. But it's not so easy to photograph. Even no. though these photos look stunning, and indeed they are, real life, it is wonderful, and it's a uh, worry and moving it and everything. It swells. You can't yeah. really sort of describe it no. to someone. How, but it how doesn't it look moves. as vivid as that colour, does it? So that's really well, good. Really good pictures. And really I think this pictures. is the um, this is one of the vehicles that they um, that they were there in. Yeah, and, and he think... says also he said the shovel on the front of the Land Rover was very useful. You can see that shovel there at the front. We've actually got a little video of um, their excursion. Oh, okay. So. Uh, <laughs> I like those. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's brilliant. Mike, Becky, thank you ever so much for sharing that with us. That was like getting, we thought that was a trailer for a big movie. <laughs> Maybe you'll do a bigger movie with that. Thank you ever so much for sending us that today. Uh, now, further south of our county, in fact, in Hertfordshire, Dave v, G3VSJ sent us this. He says, just to show you're not alone with the snow, we who live now down south have got some too and it's still not going away. You think he sent this to me yesterday? Oh, this morning, can't remember. Anyway, keep safe and keep warm. Please give our best wishes to all the club members. And that was from David, G3BSJ and family, of course. So thanks for that, Dave. Now we're heading over to um, North Walsham. Um, now the problem with this picture slightly is that uh, the person who took these pictures doesn't realize that I'm gonna share them with the world now, but I'm sure he'll forgive me. So let's have a look at this. This comes from Kevin, M0UJD. He went out for a, a walk the other night. I think he's now going to contact his lawyer. I can see him on the other screen here. Um, and he took this picture. Uh, that's a great picture. North Horsham Garden Centre, there we are. But what about this picture, Kevin? Did you expect me to share this one? <laughs> Is, can we just quickly flick between... I'm going to put you on the spot here, Kevin. Can we flick to go to meeting there and get Kevin on the screen? Now, bottom there, look, of the screen. That's him <laughs> shaking his head. Bee's almost in the shot there. Oh, isn't that nice? Have we got an another close-up, in fact, of that picture that you took in the snow? There we go. There you go. Now, that's Kevin. He's 39, and that's what he did in the snow the other night. All right? So I'm not <laughs> trying to embarrass him. <laughs> Thanks a lot for sending us that picture, or sending me that picture, Kev, that night. I think it was about half past 11, and we were corresponding and texting as you were walking around for a late-night walk, a bit like Ted did there. But anyway, thanks for sharing those. I hope you don't mind. Um, 
David and Tammy, it's got here in the script. Okay. Oh, yeah. we've got some pictures, <clears throat> haven't we? We've got a few pictures, yeah. So this was actually this morning. So um, we, we'd only been here about 20 minutes, half an hour, and you couldn't even see the footprints where, where we walked in. So. Uh, uh, and if you're watching in high res at home, you might just be able to see and get shock there because you can see an HF aerial. That's actually a half G5 RV there, looking out of from where we work here and just outside this studio, in fact. Um, and there it's snowing and you can just see it's not sticking on that wire there. So there's no excuse for me not getting on the air, well, except I'm rather busy. There you go. All right. Well, I went on a stalactite um, mission after that. So oh. I went around to see how many I could find. So um, there's a few going on there. I actually did pull one off here. Oh, my God. Which I didn't actually see these I myself. I shouldn't have done. Um, and then yeah. we've got your car. Yeah. Is like draining. I did see that. Things. And then this is the coolest picture. Look at that. That's on the um, wow. the sheds outside. That looks like um, those Christmas light, icicle mm. lights, doesn't yeah. it, that you can get. I didn't yeah. even see those. I was at work this morning, Tony. Oh, were you? What, oh, what were you doing? Well, I was, um, it took me a long while to walk to work this morning because mm. I, I got a little bit distracted. Right, <laughs> I can see. That's lovely, though. Okay. Well, thanks to us then, I suppose, yep. for that one. All right, um, who have we got next? Now, mm. oh yeah, we had a wonderful video sent to us. Very big surprise from a friend and a fellow member, of course, of the club, uh, James M0UKS. He made this video and he's compressed 50 hours of snow into 50 seconds. Have a look at this. Look at the clock in the top right, by the way, look at that. It's an hour a second, isn't it? Mm. Oh. Cool. That is brilliant. Thank you ever so much for making that film, James, with one of your cameras in the garden, I think. And that's 50 hours, just if you missed me saying that, 50 hours compressed into 50 seconds. So this is very cold stuff and snow. We don't often see it too much in Norfolk, do we? Um, we're gonna share with you now something that uh, Jim Bacon sent me last night from uh, WeatherQuest. And there's a really good place here. Now, if you have a look, this is uh, WeatherQuest. Have you got the link for that, Tammy, or not? Did, we, did you get the link? I'm going to, if not, I'm going to read it because, in a, well, in a minute, we're going to go to no, Jim I've anyway. No, just got weather quest. Okay. okay. I would tell you if at home, if you'd like to see this, this is a maximum snow depth during the last 24 hours. I'm just furiously looking on my phone now and um, for when Jim sent me this yesterday. So if you've got a pen and paper handy at home and you want to have a look at this yourself, it's a really useful tool. Here we go. Okay, so this is the link. If you want to have a look at that yourself, it is https colon forward slash forward slash weatherquest, or one word, dot co dot uk, and that is forward slash snow depth, I think. You hope. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, it's a bit, it's hard to describe why I can't see. Oh, yes, sorry, snow depth stroke map. So once again, weatherquest.co.uk forward slash snow depth as one word forward slash map. And better than that, we've got the man himself and I know he's going to be doing a contest in 10 minutes or so, but he said he'd have a quick word with us because not only have we got this snow, um, but we've got, uh, we've got a very cold night coming ahead. So we're going to go now over live to Jim Bacon near Deerham. Jim? Hello. Hi, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Well, thanks for uh, spreading the word about the website. That's um, a useful thing and it works over the whole country. So I know we you showed a close up there of just Norfolk, but um, it will operate over the whole of the UK. And the idea is you can submit your measured snow depth and you go outside and stick the ruler in the grass or whatever and um, uh, enter your value. And that stays current. Uh, for about 24 hours and then it slowly fades and gets more translucent 
and you just need to keep updating it. So the idea is if people um, were to uh, keep up to date with that, but also submit readings because snow melts. Well, obviously it melts, but it melts from underneath. So if you've got a lawn covered with snow, what's actually happening is that the heat from the ground is coming up underneath it and it's actually melting it from, from below and the actual depth of the snow slowly sinks down. It becomes more sort of compact. Whereas when snow falls freshly, it's all lots of air gaps between the snow crystals. So that's quite an interesting reading to have. And you can put the readings in as often as you like. So you don't have um, to do you don't have to sign. Like, sorry, yeah. sorry, Jim. You don't have to sign in or anything to do that. No, no. You just go onto that web page and there's a little dialogue box there that says submit a reading. And all you've got to do is put in your postcode and put in your measurement in centimetres and press submit. And that will pop that onto that map wherever you are. So it'll work for Victor over there in Bedfordshire and it'll work for any other part of the country. So it's a good way of keeping abreast of how uh, widespread a snow area is if you are planning a trip or things like that. But also it's quite it's quite interesting how the depths change over time mm. and um, how sometimes a coast will not have any snow because the air's just come in from the North Sea. And although it's making snow showers, the actual surface air touching the water as it reaches the coast, the sea temperature off the coast is probably about five Celsius or six Celsius, something like that. So um, what happens is you tend to get a rainy sleety mix right on the coast, unless it's a very heavy shower. And then that can bring the freezing level down and you get proper snow. But it's a good way of keeping in touch. Definitely. Your other question. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> the other thing I did ask you about According to my weather maps and things I'm looking at, tonight, at least here in near Attleborough, we're supposed to get to minus 12 actual temperature, minus 17 wind chill factor. So can you tell us what's happening? Is this very unusual? Because it feels unusually cold. Um, relatively unusual. Um, one, of the, well, one of the fundamental things that's going on here at the moment is that when you get a layer of snow, snow acts like a blanket, of course. And uh, there's heat trapped in the ground. We've all heard about heat pumps and all the rest of it. So normally the heat from the ground will come up and radiate into the air and you'll offset the cooling that happens at night. Well, when you've got a snow blanket, a cover over the ground, that's locked in, that's out of the way. You can't have anything to do with that. So what happens is just above the top of the snow surface, the, the energy that's there is radiating away to space. And there's no heat coming up from below. So you can get some extremely low temperatures when you have um, a snow cover. Now, we don't often get widespread deep snow cover. So, so that's kind of one of the reasons why these sorts of temperatures aren't that common. Because living on an island like we do, any air that comes to us from a cold place is usually going to be warmed up by the seas, you know, by the North Sea or the English Channel or the Atlantic. So, so if you have light winds, then you can cool things down locally and you've got no source of heat from below. And it's why the snow stays longer on the roof of your car, because that's like an insulated box of air which stops heat coming up from below. So, so at night, you'll find a lot of uh, snow remains on the top of your car the following morning. The same on bridges. If you're driving around these country roads, by the way, and... Um, you go on a gritted road and you think, this is all all right, we've got no problems. And you come to an overbridge, that can be very icy indeed, because again, there's no heat coming from below. And bridges are notoriously frosty, icy places in this sort of weather. I, I, I'm reading here minus five Celsius, but I think the winds are lighter over the land than they have been. So I don't think we're gonna have a big wind chill effect. I think uh, as air gets colder, it gets more treacly. So it's more stagnant and the wind at the surface isn't noticeable. In fact, I'm not registering any wind at all here. Um, either the anemometer's frozen or there's no wind. But either way, you haven't got a big wind chill factor inland. You might still have it round the coast, but not inland. All right. Well, 
That is fantastic. As always, Jim, it's not just telling us the weather, but it's how, how it works so we have a better understanding of it. Thank you ever so much for coming on. Very short notice. I texted you about an hour ago, I think, and said, would you mind coming on and just saying a few words? Because it does feel slightly extraordinary, particularly that temperature. I couldn't quite believe it when it was said minus 12. So anyway, cool. thank you ever so much for coming on for this, uh, Jim. I know you're going to stay with us a little bit longer if you can, as well as doing the contest at uh, eight o'clock. So thanks again. Pleasure. Brilliant, thank you. Jim Bacon, G3 YLA there. And I'm just gonna give you that uh, web, that address again for that snow map, because it really is good. Although I'm sure if you Google it, it'll probably come up. So it's weatherquest.co.uk, weatherquest is one word, forward slash snow depth, forward slash map. Okay, so hopefully that you'll, you'll be able to enter into that and take part in it and be part of building that map up. Now, a bit of fun for you now. Um, as you know, uh, Zoom and things that we're using here, like GoToMeeting things tonight, can be great fun and have often been used to keep families and friends together over the last 10 or 11 months or so. Um, and you can even have different backgrounds. I mean, this is a real background set we've got here, or a backdrop, but you can do it electronically with things like Zoom and you can even filter your faces to be different things as well. But of course, these things also have serious uses as well. And they, but one thing we've found is they don't really mix. So as well as families keeping in touch and used for work, courts in Texas also use them. If you haven't already seen this, have a look at this. It really happened. It's a court in Texas. Mr. Ponton, I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. Uh, you might want to uh, uh, take, take We're trying look. to, we're tr can you hear me, Judge? I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, in the... it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. <laughs> That's, I'm here live. It's not, I'm not a cat. <laughs> I, can, I can see that. Um, I think if you click the up arrow next to this. I just love that. I don't love that. The quote. Now, that was a quote. That was, of course, quoting from the Guardian website, but it's actually everywhere. You can find it on all social media. You can find it on the BBC as well. And I think they actually had an interview with the cat, didn't they? They today? did. But I, I, and I heard this on the radio this morning, and I found it. And then I said to Tammy, and I showed you, and you were, you were, your eyes were watering as well with fun, weren't you? And uh, it was really a great fun thing. So if you want to see that again or show your friends and things like that, just sort of type in, I think I typed in court in Texas with cat and that's happened. That really happened. Can you imagine the embarrassment for that lawyer there? Anyway, bit of fun. Tammy, little people, it's little your people. turn. Yeah. Okay. What have we got? Well, this week we've got something a little bit different. So as, ah. it's, as it's a snow theme, I thought we'd go with snow. So this is actually um, a little people that I made a couple of years ago when we had the beast from the east yeah so i thought i'd revive it to uh to show and uh, yes i did put real snow on one of your trains you did dry the wheels afterwards didn't well you? maybe yeah because if not we could have a rusty train oh i love that yeah that's lovely so it's our own little people that's our own little once. people this week yeah all right normal Brilliant. service will resume next week all right thank you very much for sharing that tammy little people all right so what have you been doing at home i know you can't go out much and you can't go out much with the weather anyway at the moment can you uh, but do keep letting us know drop us the emails as you can see sharing pictures and things like that whether it's about the weather or anything else or radio of course uh, we'd love to have them drop them to this address radio at dcpmicro.com we love to get your news and pictures and things and we love to share them with everybody else the whole of tonight as you'll see is made up of you doing things like that so please keep that coming. And uh, yeah, radio at dcpmicro.com. Just keep letting us know. Now, there's the other part of the, show, the program that we do at this time. It's a little bit later because we had so much to cover with the snow. And that is our shack. Yep. So who do you think worked, or works rather, from a shack like this? Have we got any guesses on um, here? I'm not sure we have actually. Um, let's have a look. You start reading some and I'll... Um... Okay, I all right, I'll start reading it. So, um, the first one, and Tam Tammy hasn't quite heard this one. This is Tom G8XQD, and he sent a message saying, that shack looks so neat. 
and there are some very feminine touches of cards on the desk, has plants on the windowsill, and it's so neat. What gave it away to me mostly is the naughty elf and the otter cap. I don't know, it's the naughty elf. I know, elf. I'm the naughty elf. I reckon that is Tammy M0TC's shack. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> of course, it might be David G7URP after Tammy has had a tidy up. Well, thanks a lot. Or both if they share the same shack. Thanks for keeping up the good work, entertaining, educating and amusing us all in this awkward time of lockdown and in isolation. Thank you, Tom, for that. So, was he right? Is that one of our shacks? Or is that our shack? Mark G0LGJ, he thinks that it's Scott M0BLH's shack. OK, Nigel 2E0NLK. I, I think it could be Roger G3LDI or Malcolm G3PDH. And Roger G3LDI... He thinks it's Scott, M0, BLH, Shack as well. Was there any guesses? There wasn't there? any more guesses. All right, no. so let's. it's time to reveal then whose Shack this was. Was it ours, Tammy? It wasn't, no. Or was it, if it was yours, <laughs> I, I haven't seen it. No. <laughs> it was Scott, M0, BLH. Yes, so Scott, well of course. He's Got it. been on the programme a few times over the uh, months. Um, you know, he's diving. That was the clue I was trying to give you. And if you look at that cap there, it says Otter Dry Suits. <clears throat> That was a clue. Never mind. Anyway, thanks. Well done to, uh, let's see who got it right. Mark, she's RGJ, and Roger G3LDI. Well done to you. Uh, by the way, I should mention now that we've revealed whose shack it is, that Scott has been doing the Scuba Ham Awards this month of February. He's a dive instructor, and stations will gain a maximum of six points with confirmed contacts with him. There's a small charge for getting the award, but all the proceeds will go towards a, a charity called Project Aware. Now, it'd be too much, I think, to give that sort of information out here on, on this program. So we're going to put it in the newsletter. And if you can support that in some way, that would be great. So we'll be publicising what Scott's doing there for some charity work there. Now it's time to look at whose shack it is for this week. So who works from a shack like this? I think that we've, uh, we've caught the culprit. <laughs> I didn't think dogs need licences anymore. That's why he's doing it. You don't need a dog licence. No, who is that? Now, look at that. That's obviously... Well, I, don't, I can't give away too much, can I? But that is not a house, I don't think. That is a mobile home or caravan shack. Looks like a dog who loves cucumber, cucumber as well. Cucumber, yeah. <laughs> so there we go. There's your clues. They're, they're there. Who do you know works with one of those, that radio there? That's an icon radio, I think. They look like they've got an iPad plugged into it. But anyway, it's for you to guess at home. Or maybe you know who works from a shack like this. As usual, drop us a line to this address, radio at dcpmicro.com. We'll be putting those pictures on the website in the next day or so, of course. And you've got until next Wednesday at 3 o'clock at the absolute latest to let us know who you think shack that is. The mobile shack, indeed. So, brilliant. Now, just a few things to, to let you know what's happening on the, the, uh, in the club in the next few days. Um, before Monday's net, we've got uh, Saturday, 13th of February, we've got Koblenz. It's the annual, uh, sorry, the monthly sked on 7.135 megahertz at 10 a.m. on Saturday, local time. What, and there's also a local call in to the net controller, which is probably Malcolm, I should think. Uh, 145250 megahertz. So this this Saturday the 13th of February, Koblenz sked 7.135 megs at 10 a.m. Everybody's welcome, of course. They had, I think it was last month or the month before, they had some stunning conditions to work. Malcolm said he didn't think he'd ever worked Europe in with such conditions. So maybe give it a go. Excellent. And on Monday the 15th of February, we've got our informal narknet on GB3NB with Steve, with Steve G3EVA. Uh, there was 11 on the net last Monday, in fact, he says. Now, this, mo this Monday, he's got a subject of Desert Island Discs, your favourite music, and what item would you, take you, would you take with you that you couldn't be without? I was recently uh, interviewed, wasn't I, for a magazine, and they asked me these questions, and uh, um, the, uh, they asked me what I would get, wouldn't go without, and guess what I said I wouldn't go without? True. Your wallet? Model Rail. Look at Model Rail last month. That was what it was on at the back. Well, my wallet. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers. OK, I, I shall take you there next time. Uh, and also on Monday night, half past eight, we've got the CW <coughs> net. And on uh, next Wednesday, 
a week tonight here for NARC Live. We've got Rob Sherwood. Now, if that ring, name rings a bell, Sherwood Engineering and Sherwood is often the, the name that you hear when all new radios and things come out. Sherwood have made themselves a name for really grading amateur radios and most people believe them when it comes to receivers. So they've got a sort of kind of top 10 chart or more than 10 in fact of radios out there of performance. But we're going to speak to the man himself, Rob Sherwood. He's based in Colorado with his company there as you can see and we're going to find out how he does grade radios and maybe a little insight into do the company send them special radios or did you just get one off the shelf or anything like that because I know it's very important to some people and in particular of course the manufacturers. So that's next Wednesday at NARC Live at 7.30 of course. Plus of course all the regulars um, and of course your sh Who Shack and your pictures and stories and everything else as well. And of course we, we mention it every week this card we can send this to anybody that you think can be cheered up by a card like that, whether they're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, or maybe just not feeling too good, uh, we'll be happy to send this card. Just drop us a line uh, with the name and address of who you'd like to send it to and why, and we'll be very happy to send them one of these cards. Now, we're at last, just after eight <coughs> o'clock, we're now gonna go to our main event tonight, I think. Again, as I said earlier, you haven't let us down. We've got lots and lots of unboxings, and in fact, maybe some of the people at home. Let's go back to those people at home. Can we have a look at them, Sure. Shannon? If I'll just bear with me one moment, because you put me on the spot Oh, sorry here. about that. Okay. Let's just see how okay. everybody... Any of you guys at home, how many have we got there? Um, we've got 12 people there. Have any of you got any unboxings you want to share with us live? There's a hand. Oh, Steve, right, we're going to come to him at some point. No shaking hands from everybody else at the moment. Okay. Well, just wave your hands if you want to be involved in some way. We'll come to you for sure. All right. Thanks for joining us anyway. Okay, so let's start with uh, the first video that we received when we announced this a few weeks ago. It was from Kem, M0KJW. And he sent us this unboxing video that he made of a kit that he was making. So let's have a look if we're ready, Tams. Yep. Here we go. Good evening, this is Ken, M0KJW, having a go at an unboxing video. I will first apologise and say that I have started to work on this project ahead of uh, the, uh, making the video, but then this was a new idea for me as well. As you can see from the picture we've got at the moment, this is a uh, what they call a Nixie clock. I was expressed an interest in having one, and my lovely lady wife Shirley, G0ZAA, bought me one for Christmas. Um, the only problem is, it's a kit. It's come with all the component parts and it's very good. So let's have a look at this. It came nicely packed in a box, which was actually wrapped up in Christmas wrapping paper and bells and ribbons and string and all sorts of things. It comes very, very well packaged. It's got lots of bubble wrap on it. It, it came with the, the case. The case is a, um, an acrylic sort of case. It did its inputs again. It had a brown uh, paper covering on it to protect it, which I've already taken off. But you can see that's well made, that's well cut. That's beautifully finished like that. It's got its own power supply. It's got its own leads for connecting to uh, to the power supply or to the USB system. It has a remote control. The components have all come in plastic bags and things like that. And what I liked about it very much was that everything has been thought about. So you have these resistors have turned up. It's all the power. <laughs> Typically the packaging is all the wrong way around, but if you can see on there, they've actually marked everything so you know what it is. And this was all pre-done before I got there, before I got to it. That is just packing. I'll show you the circuit board. I have a... Uh, you can see there, this is what the circuit board looked like when it came out of the packaging. I have now done some of the work on it. 
I've wrapped it back up again so you can see how it was originally wrapped. And I have put some of the components on. So I've put on the sockets that came with it for the ICs and put on some of the uh, resistors and a couple of other bits and pieces. You can study my soldering if you want. <laughs> been a while since I've done anything like this, so it's, uh, it's been, I've been taking my time trying to get it correct. But that's how it uh, came to me. Printed circuit board with all the components marked on it, and then you just got to uh, populate it. I say just. <laughs> These things are easier said than done. All the sockets came on this side of this piece of foam wrapped up in uh, a cling film like product on the other side you have all the ICs ready to put in the socket I've not undone those yet all the other components are in here these are the ends of the boxes you've got LEDs you've got um, standoffs you've got oh everything you need the whole kit is there and there is a list of parts that came in with it as well and these are the tubes Again, I've not undone these very much, just enough to have a little look. Lots of uh, bubble wrap you can see to protect it, but these are the tubes in here. Oh, Trying to do it very carefully. That's what they look like, Nixie tubes, and they give you the numbers that you see in the clock. I'm going to wrap these up again carefully before we go any further. But this is the bubble wrap that came with them, so it's all very well protected. Now the instructions aren't very clear on how you put it together. We've got instructions on how to use it, not a problem there, and you, all the different bits and pieces here. But you can go on the internet and you can download pictures of how things are done. So there's your circuit board with the information on it, how to set things up. I've actually got it upside down, sorry about that. And uh, you can see where everything is on there and uh, advice on how to place the components. More photographs, more ideas about how to do it, more advice. Make sure you put that bit there. Make sure you put it this way round, do that bit. The string resistors, make sure they're the right way round. If you go look at the uh, video I showed you, I've already done that part of it. And just, yeah, lots of telling you which way around to put the LEDs and uh, a couple of the other components in there. So it's quite nicely done. I'm taking my time with it. And in due course, I hope to be able to show you a completed working clock. But anyway, that's my first attempt at an unboxing video. I hope you didn't find it too de tedious. Many thanks, M0KJW. I think that is brilliant. Excellent. I think it's both an excellent kit and everything, very interesting. But Ken, brilliant job if you've never done one of those before. You've obviously had to set up your camera and everything. So thanks ever so much for sharing that with us. Now, a few weeks ago, I teased you all by saying that, because um, I had an, uh, something to unbox, which I've never actually tried, and we'll be seeing that later, very shortly, actually. But um, Tammy didn't have anything because... Rather foolishly, you opened all your Christmas presents. <laughs> you and, may call it foolish. And, and yeah. used them. <laughs> okay. So I felt sorry for you, and I know all of you did at home. And so I bought her something, and here it comes. You ha you don't know what's in there, do you? I have no idea. I have a knife. <laughs> what is that? I'm not in case I don't tell it. you. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the box. <clears> I promise you guys. It came from a well-known online retailer. Um, have we got a camera that we've, we've set up a few extra cameras here to do these things? I'm not sure it'll actually... Um... Well, anyway, just open the top and okay. I'm sure it'll be obvious. Okay. Do you think it is, guys? What I actually, the only clue I gave anybody, but Tammy may not have realised it was a clue, I'm is... Definitely everybody. I wonder what she's going to make of this. That's what I said. I wonder what she's going to make of this. That was my little clue. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. You really have not had any idea. No. Let me take this out of your way, babe. Classic Lego. Now the key is, some of you might be friends with Tammy on 
Facebook and know her and things like that, and you'll know that she loves making things with Lego. But everything that Tammy has ever made with Lego has been made out of one of those big kits. So you've just finished making um, what I bought you for Christmas, the um, uh, Old, Sta Trafford. Old Trafford Stadium. You've made a Harry Potter thing and um, you know the, the castle and all that. These yep. are really big kits, but they're specific for those. Why I wanted to test Tammy with this is because there's nothing, no instructions in it on what to make. It's a big box of Lego bricks. Cool. And Tammy, you've got what? How long we've got to run the program? Well, um, in between working a little bit. <laughs> I was going to say, do you want me to like put the videos together well, and stuff? Well, I think we'll allow that. But it was my idea of putting this on early was that we give you a bit of time to see what your imagination would be able to do with it. Just show everybody the camera, maybe a close-up camera on, on oh, three yeah. oh, there. Three. Yeah, there we go. And you can uh, see the sort of thing. So it's just boxes of. We're on seven. show everybody. There we are. Where are we? So there you go. can just see it's just bags of bits. Oh, there's, there's a book, a, an instructions. Oh. Well, it's, there's nothing specific to make, though, is there? It's just okay. bits. Yep. So, Tammy, your task, should you decide to accept it, is to try and come up with something creative in the next 40 minutes or so, I should think, will be do you, on. Do you not think it's going to make a bit of noise, me trying to well, do this? Maybe. We'll have to turn the mic down maybe on a video or something. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to see it at home? Let's, let's go to the guys at home. Let's see what do they think. Hang on a minute. Oh, we're going to ask you at home now. We're going to go to you. Oh, yeah. We're going to just... The mic oh, okay. The All right. We're going to then see. We're going to... Uh, I'd like a thumbs up if you think, Tammy, now we should be telling her <laughs> to make something of, out of her own imagination. <laughs> Look at all those thumbs up. <laughs> Any thumbs I down. I think that's a really unfair challenge considering the workload that Tammy's got at the moment. <laughs> this, but go for it. This cost, this, cost me, this, this cost me 25 quid. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to earn it. <laughs> what, what we should do, I think, is perhaps have a creative one for during this session and then she can surprise us next week with what she's managed to make in all the right. week. That sounds yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, I like Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, anybody else? So I think everybody had thumbs up for that. So Tammy, that is your job. Okay. You'll have to open the bags quietly. I will we'll, have to we'll, open we'll, the bags We'll kill our quietly. mics for a little bit and yeah. we'll do that in a, in a while. <laughs> anyway, a bit, a bit of fun and then you'll see my unboxing in a minute. But you've got a nice box to put it in at least, haven't you? I have, yeah. All right, I know you have got lots to do here. We don't just sit down and talk to a camera. <laughs> it might look like we do. But anyway, someone else then, who the next person who sent us a video, something that they were unboxing, was John, 2E0TWQ. And in fact, he's on the call, I think. Is he there still? Yes, he is. So we'll be able to come to him afterwards, maybe, John. We'll come to you afterwards, if it's all right. We'll come and see your... Um, we'll come and talk to you about what this is. But I'll read you what... Um, John said, hi David and Tammy, 60, this is a 60 watt dimmable LED music ceiling light Bluetooth speaker with RGP stars and a remote control. He says, I recently bought a new LED light for the shack as it has a dimmer control and when I'm on video calls I can dim it so the camera will not pick up too much light. It has a bonus in that it's also got Bluetooth and a four inch speaker built in as well and it will connect to a computer and a phone etc. He says that he's installed it and it works fine and not bad for £21 delivered or it's just gone up a little bit, he said. The unboxing is a video that he found on YouTube. It's a three minute video. So someone else did the video, but John's gonna come and talk about it in a moment as well. So let's have a look at this video. So this is for a 60 watt dimmable LED music ceiling light Bluetooth speaker. All right, so we got this product, and um, we, we bought it online. Now we're gonna unbox it. This speaker is a wireless speaker, and this is how you get it. You get it in a box like this. So this is the speaker. So we got we got on a plastic so you can see that it's well packed. So now let's see. Voila. This is the speaker. So now this is the company right here. You get the instructions. I have to put it together. Alright. So let's put this one on the side. And this is 
the speaker itself. Uh, the plastic is really good. Uh, I think it's well made. Uh, this is supposed to be the light, and these are the cables right here. So this one is going to be attached to to the ceiling. So I'm pretty sure we have to remove the whole thing. So I'm going to get back to you guys once we start the installation. But this is basically just a, um, this is basically how they set it. Uh, you also have the control remote right here. So you don't have to be reaching out. And uh, yeah, so this is how you get it. All right, so I'll get back to you guys whenever we, uh, we install it and we make it work. Thank you. All right, so we install it. So now it's working. Uh, we're gonna put the cover on. So just make sure that the cover is properly centered. There you go. There you go. So as long as it's fully pressured, it should be okay. All right, so now let's try it. Let's try the light, see if it works. And there you go. So now it's fully working. So now we're gonna get to, to our, uh, we're gonna connect it to our TV. See if it works. Okay, so once it's installed, you can see that it's, it's working. We're gonna go for A and S long, and we're gonna pair it. Take a little while. There you go. It's asking you if you want to request. You say yes. Connected. And now it's connected. So now let's play some music to see if it works. So we're going to have some music playing. Let's say. And there you go. It works now. It really looks impressive, mm. doesn't it? So anyway, to find out if it really is impressive, because he's had it some time now, let's go over to John, uh, 2E0TWQ. We're just going to change the mic sources over. That was just so everybody at home could, could hear the video. Um, we're going to go over to John now. So John, tell us what you think yeah. of that. Good evening, David, Tammy, and everyone. Hello, John. Hi, John. Hello. Yeah, we, yeah, can, we can hear you. you. Okay, yeah, it's working well. Uh, it, like I said, it's Bluetooth. I've been listening to the show all night on it, and I don't use any other speakers now. Um, I've got the remote here in my hand. Um, if I press the RGB, there you go. Oh, yeah. We're now in red, green. <laughs> uh, Colour for all, ca all occasions, blue. And um, you can adjust the sound and everything on the remote, dimness and uh, brightness. We go back to the normal mode. Uh, I'll knock the light down now because that's what helped me with the uh, when I'm on video. How's that? Very good. It's good. No. It seems remarkable for 20 odd pounds, Mark, uh, John, doesn't it? Do you not think? Yeah, well, they were about £19, and when I went on the second time to um, find them on eBay again, just to put it put it in for you and get the picture and that, uh, they'd gone up to 21 uh, It's got a 5-inch speaker. Um, I connected uh, to, the ma uh, to the light bulb fitting. I used one of them old-fashioned little... Uh, can you see that? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, those old... Yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, because there's only two cables, so uh, I have a problem with the council. If I miss about the electrics, uh, I have to get electrician in and everything. So yeah, course, uh, yeah. that was the easy way out. So um, I, I made a sort of like... Uh, supported by the cable, but also uh, put a plastic... Uh, like a post from the light onto the plug itself, so it gave it a bit some more support. Mm. Well, it looks really good, John. 
Um, uh, thank you for sharing it and thank you for finding that video as well of uh, unboxing it. It looks really, I'm sure there's a few people now looking at that. I bet they're going to go, go away and have a look at that on eBay or, or one of the other online retailers as well. I have got some just a... Oh yeah, the pictures, that's right. Pictures yes. and, the, Here we go. Um, and the listing yeah. that you sent. Uh, I can send the link to the listing if you want to, David, or... Whatever. Well, I think people will get it from that. If anybody wants it specifically, if you drop us an email, radio at dcpmicro.com, and we'll share you the link that's on there that you sent us, John. Or we'll put them in touch with okay. you, maybe. But that looks brilliant, I think, for 20-odd pounds, 25 pounds. Yeah. A lot, but it does. So, great. Thanks for sharing, John. Yeah, well, I'm now, uh, I've am i got LED um, um, all over now. No bowls at all. I've got them in the hallway in the lounge uh, and uh, two out of three are remote control. Yeah. So I get, actually with this one, I, I can get in bed now and turn the light out. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it does look really, really good. Thanks. Thanks again for sharing that, John. That's no John uh, 2E0TWQ. Thank you for sharing that with us. Right. Now, according to the running order, it's time for me. It's you, is it now? To unbox... I don't think we've actually got room for anything else on the desk here now. <laughs> I know, we have got a lot going on here. Um, you have got your Lego. Oh, just better just show it, just hold that up without it all falling out. We have we did just quickly open the bags because they were making a lot of yeah. noise. And you've now got loads of stuff. I've, I've you've got some people, by the way. Picked a few things. Just to tell you as well, share everybody if you because I know that there's there's two or three platforms you can look at. By the way, several people, Martin said that the Nixie clock looked like a lovely Subject. I did just. I'm going to go right back as well to Paul uh, G4XBT. I think your call is Paul. You said the you people in the UK, one inch of snow and everything stops. We have lots of snow, minus six to minus fifteen before wind chill. Everything still works. Schools open, buses run, people go to work. <laughs> well, I suppose maybe they might have done if we weren't in this lockdown. But anyway, I okay. Think Paul is in Poland, I believe. Isn't is he? I think is so. It Poland? Yes. I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Paul. Well. Granted, we do slow down. Well, you know that anyway, because I think you're an expat, aren't you? Can I just, um, I'll just change something quickly, because uh, I can see that Don on the... Oh, yes. Um, okay. The He's there. in Indianapolis. Right. Okay. Oh, it's gone. Oh, it's gone. Don, come back. Show we were going to share... your picture again. We were going to share that picture. Don? N N0 DLB stroke G0 POH. Now, we just saw a picture, for those of you at home looking on different... Oh, here we go. go. We're now going to go to Don. Can you speak, John? <laughs> uh, Don, rather. Here we go. Uh, yeah. We can hear you, Don. By the way, you're live or not live. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, yeah. looks like you accidentally closed me, so... Oh, sorry. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes, yes, we're back on. I'm in Indianapolis, on the west side of Indianapolis, about three miles... Uh, Three miles northwest of Indianapolis Airport, and we got about, uh, I would say, about two on the ground, and uh, a bit more coming down. Okay, wow. I bet. Do, do you normally get? I'm um, pardon my ignorance about Indianapolis, but do you normally get quite a lot of snow this time of year? Well, I've only lived here a couple of years, so I'm presuming this is normal. I'm from Northeast Ohio, where we get a lot more snow than this, so this is this is kind of nothing to me. Sure. Okay, we've got kind of that much. We've we've even had probably a little bit more than that in certain parts of the UK because we've had winds as well, which as you know makes drifting and things. But oh, I understood. I I, I spent several years there, and I, it completely baffles me that a half inch of snow shuts down in Norfolk. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. We've had definitely more than half inch. We'll we'll put you in touch with the weather forecaster if you like, and he'll tell you for sure. In fact, look at that weather map. Well, well. well, have a look at that weather quest map, the snow depth, because I've never seen that before. And um, you'll, we'll be able to see, we'll be able to compare notes and see how much snow. But it's more than half an inch, I can tell you, Don. Anyway, lovely to see you. Thanks for sharing that picture live from Indian Indianapolis. What a wonderful <laughs> thing this internet is. Thank you. Okay, now, oh, just before I go back to the sort of script, as it says, and we've got a few people here who put thumbs up. They want uh, Tammy to make something here. Um, Tom Fisk says, how about a snowman, Tammy? That's I, I haven't got enough um, white, bricks. white bricks for that, <laughs> yeah. so it'd have to be a motley snowman. But well, it could be. 
but we're not going to tell you what to do. But anyway, we're seeing she she has made a start, but I, I will admit she is quite busy in this show. So anyway, and we've got lots of thumbs up and things there as well. So um, and we've got Dave uh, G A A D M. He says on he's on B A T C and he says uh, snow is very bad. So I, I guess that means it's very bad where you are, Dave. Maybe you'd like to put on um, where you are in the country, and then we'll share that with everybody else as well. Anyway, we're going to now go to back to unboxing and this is what tammy bought me for christmas um oh my meant to be looking at that sorry about now. that yeah i know you're gonna you can stop making your lego <laughs> i was making my lego <laughs> i know this is um a thing called train tracker i don't know if you've seen this um i did come across it somewhere not quite sure where um but on sort of social media or something like that i think it's a british design live led transit maps and this one's london uh, london underground tfl1 now, I had opened it, but like several things of mine, as you've probably got to gather now, I really, Tammy, you should see her. She's not looking at all what I'm talking about. She's busy um, making the Lego, so maybe I shouldn't have set that challenge. This is my unboxing anyway. I really didn't get further than having a quick look at this. So let's, this is a circuit board, and I'm going to be telling you as I go along, because, and especially as I didn't actually buy it, I didn't go study it most, but look, I think we can all recognise what that is. Let me just get the lights, not that they don't glare on here. There we are, that's London Train Tracker. Now, we can see there's a few integrated circuits there, but I think those yellow bits here, all these little yellow patterns, they're LEDs. And I think what happens is you plug it in, probably have to link it to the internet, and not only do they light up where the under underground um, rails are, but actually it gives you a live update of where trains are. So I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> so much looking forward to it. It's about six weeks since Christmas and I haven't actually got round to it. And I'm going to be trying to do that if I've got time tonight as well. Just because we're, a lot of us are RFE type people here. Look at this. That's obviously a radio frequency module, probably a Bluetooth module or something, I should think. Maybe Wi-Fi. Um, and I hope we're going to have time to try this tonight. But obviously I really don't know. I haven't read the instructions, as, as most good engineers don't. And I've got a cable and things in here. Let's just have a look what else I've got to make it a proper unboxing video. And I've got some basic instructions and some simple steps. There we are. I will try, even though I'm quite busy as well, thinking about what everybody's saying, but I'll try and get this running tonight before we finish. But we have some other things first. So let's just put that away and let me look at my script again. <laughs> there we go. And tell you what's coming up next. Now, this is actually very opportune timing, but that, that we were a little bit late because if we if we did this a couple of weeks ago when it was meant to be, I've got stuff everywhere here, Tammy. <laughs> if we were, just put it out of the way, like they do on Blue PT, you know, just put it out of the way. There's one I got earlier. If we'd have done this a couple of weeks ago, I know for a fact we couldn't have shown this next video. Um, Kevin M0 you did it, who you saw briefly earlier, or you saw his video. Um, it was actually his other half's birthday yesterday. And of course, we're not allowed to go in, but we did socially distance, just hand over a present Throw yesterday. Throw a present over Throw the doorstep, present, yeah, I think is came the technical from term. <laughs> everybody in the family. And honestly, I really thought, and it was only then that I thought about it last night, that this would make a brilliant unboxing video for her. So Becky unboxed this, I think, and they made this film. I haven't seen this yet. Tammy, I think, seen a bit of it. Um, and this is something, seriously, guys, that would interest you if you like making stuff. I've never heard of this thing before that the family got. I uh, just got a link from Kevin. This is what uh, Becky would like from everybody. So I think you'll enjoy this. It's called a cry cut? Cry cut. A cry cut. Have you ever or heard of that? Or if you're American, I think they call it a cricket. Oh, is that right? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe Don would call it a cricket. Have any of you, just looking at home, can we just quickly fade to home? I'm sorry to stop you on your Lego again. Have, has any, have any of you have heard of a cry cut or a cricket machine? No. Okay. Well, you're in for a treat because this really is going to be worth looking at. Have a look at this, and this is from Kevin M0UJD and from his other half, Becky M7BE, whose birthday it was yesterday. Well, good evening from Becky M7BEE and Kevin M0UJD. For her birthday, Becky got a machine called a Cricket Maker. I hope I've got the word cricket right. Um, this video was obviously sped up a little bit just to get the box open because it did take a little bit of time. And, uh, anyway, back to normal speed. In the box, you get 
uh, a few bits and pieces to try your first project. You obviously get the Cricut machine itself, all the power supplies and cables that you need. And in the back of the box, you can see the two white pads. They are the sticky or semi-sticky pads that you put the media onto for the thing to cut and uh, do whatever it's going to do. Very, very clever. It's, it's sort of a sticky, non-sticky surface is, is the best way of describing it. But there you have it. That's, uh, that's the box contents. You think, uh, a couple of blades, a pen and uh, all the bits. Obviously, uh, you've typically got to create an account to set the thing up. And uh, as soon as you do that, it, uh, it did an update. And uh, once you've done that, it's a case of dropping a piece of material or whatever onto um, the sheet and letting it, uh, letting it do its job. So this is just the, the sample that it gives you, uh, or one of several samples that you can print or cut or however you want to call it, as a bit of a test run to sort of see what it'll do and make sure it'll work. And once the machine's finished, you uh, push the unload button and uh, it ejects the media and there you have it, the cut piece. And uh, that's what it looks like when it's pulled out of the, uh, the fabric. We did a couple of other things as well, just as sort of trials really. Um, there was one, there's another cut from card. And uh, I imported an image and uh, it doesn't look great there because I hadn't really pulled it apart very well. But... Um, it did pretty well and I have to say it's it's quite a clever machine and uh, well worth a look. Stop doing Lego Sorry. and concentrate <laughs> on what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, okay that's brilliant. Um, and, uh, we had never seen it working, we, as far as we're concerned it's just a box that we bought and on behalf of everybody. Um, so that's wonderful. Can we now go over wonder live to Kevin and to B? Um, and maybe just talk to them a little bit about it, even though literally you've had it less than 24 hours, I should think. Kevin? Hello. Um, from what I can gather, it's, uh, it's been sort of used a little bit today. Let's uh, bring it so you can see me. Um, it's been used a little bit today, so I had a bit of a play around. Um, you, you've, got to, uh, you've got to select the right depth for the media that you're using, be it card or fabric or, or something. And it depends on the the, um, the thickness of the media. I call it media. I don't know what else to, to call it. Um, to how deep and how far it cuts. So it's, there's a fine line of getting that right. And uh, I know she's had a bit of trial and error with that today. She's produced a card. Ah, here's one I made earlier. So everything you see on there has been cut using the machine. Oh, wow. And holding that a bit closer. There's actually lots of layers there cut at, uh, at different sizes so, so is that cut out of paper or cardboard or what kevin uh, it's a mixture of uh, fabric and card i think on in that in this instance Wonderful. but um i've seen uh, i've seen videos of it uh, you, you put a, a card in but um one i saw was folded and um it's able to like like the lips that came out right at the beginning the the test pan it's able to, um, to, to 
cut loads and loads of <laughs> QRM in the background. Is able to cut loads of little bits out and uh, make quite a, a quite a lovely pattern. Inside the pen. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, um, say that. Also, inside is stuck in. Let's try and get that a bit closer and a bit still. Uh, you can uh, you can make a or you can put a pen, a proper pen attachment onto. If you saw where the blade was on the right hand side of the unit, there's another uh, attachment on the left, and you can put pens into it. And uh, that's oh, wow. actually written that using a, a a marker pen. It reminds me. I don't know if you know, Kevin, that there used to be a thing called plotters, which it sort of reminds me vaguely yeah. of that sort of technology. Yeah. And I'm sure it's some of the others watching as well. Okay, um, before we go and leave you, because I know you've got a one-year-old there who's going to be quite noisy at times, and that's fine, but we'd love to see him and maybe just see B quickly, because it's a, it was her birthday. If we could quickly ask Becky, hi, oh, hello, and there's Finn. Hello. Well, that's because you can see us, because you're just going to see yourself, yeah. aren't you? Can we quickly put ourselves on there, Tammy? Here we go. Hello, Finn. Becky, can we just ask you, because you asked for this for your birthday from everybody, didn't you? What What are you going to do with it? <laughs> I don't know where to start, loads. <laughs> but, I mean, particularly, I know you love crafts and things like that. Um, the, anything, yeah, there's so much that you can do. Um, stencils to make um, bows for hair ties. Um I've seen on there you can, um, I think mostly I'll be doing vinyl on clothing and stuff. Or what sort of for labelling um, and making shirts and things like that. And Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Okay, well, good luck Hello, with it. David. And happy birthday. Uh, just, we'll come to you in a minute, John. Sorry. Just, can we, we just, if we, we will, I promise. We'll just go back to Becky and just say the happy birthday once again for yesterday, uh, Becky. Thank you. All right, this is sound activated, this thing. So anyway, thank you very much, and thanks for joining us. Bye-bye, Finn. Bye-bye. It's typical, <laughs> isn't it? The one time that you want him to make a bit of noise to bring the sound back <laughs> is the one time he's quiet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All that's right, well, luck, I think. thank you ever so much for making that video because you literally got this. We dropped it off at your door, at your literally at your door last night or whatever, eight o'clock or something. I, um, so. I put the video together at dinner time today, and it's, well. it took the whole afternoon to upload it. Did it? Some yeah. strange reason. Well, it was go. lovely quality anyway. Thank you ever so much for doing it, Kevin. All right. Cheers. Take care. Bye bye, Finn. Now, let's go to John because I think he had a question about it. It sounded like to me. So, John, if you speak now, we probably can automatically yeah. get you on this uh, call. Yeah. It's, um, if you remember when I do the club stickers and I've been down to the club and we radioactive and made all the stickers with my uh, vinyl cutter and plotter. It's a mini version of one of them um, because I can take the uh, knife out and put paint in and do it on a full scap. Uh, can you remember once when I brought it down there? I do, yes. I, I mean, this one, though, just sort of, did, it does fabric and cloth and things as well. It just I've just never heard of Crycut or, or Cricut. No, it's a small version. I think they made a small version of the uh, vinyl cutter like I've got. Mm. Um, like I do my T-shirts and stuff like that, and I cut out uh, from vinyl instead of card, but uh, I can put card into it. Yeah. Well, it looks a lovely thing anyway, and um, yeah, and thanks very much for sharing. Sorry, Kevin? I should, this thing is able to cut leather, and um, I suppose it, it doesn't craft use, wood. yeah, it, use, it uses the word craft wood. I don't think it's bolster. I think bolster. it's probably something to the equivalent of. Yeah. But it's... Uh, it's do that as well so you could I'll maybe you some... sorry i'll give you some vinyl and some t-shirt material kevin and uh, tell you how to do it and you can have a go on it and and, and just thinking about our hobby as well that possibly um what we could do is um you could maybe make some little boxes or something if you could make it make card quite stiff card you can make some really nice boxes and yeah, things for, pro for yeah, projects it's able to things as well sorry yeah, able to sorry <laughs> qrm again it's able to score things score, yeah so cut but score round so you can score a box ready to fold something up or, or an envelope to fold or something like well, that looks looks wonderful thank you anyway thanks again for making the video kevin cheers 
Okay. Just so before that, we move on, um, yeah. Shirley, um, Shirley uh, uh, G0ZAA, is that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Me. Um, apparently, well, my mic's not up very loud. Shirley has an embosser, the same sort of thing. She knew immediately what it was, apparently. So um, that was cool. So it's a similar sort of thing. Brilliant. Okay. Um, oh, yes. And I can see we've got a few other comments. I must mention that. J Dave, G-A-A-D-M, who said they've got snow, who said it was snow is very bad. He's in northwest London. So there we are. We have got, I, said, I said, think, for the, for the sake of Don over there in the States and uh, maybe for Paul, who's in Poland, we think, um, <clears throat> Britain has got quite a lot more, or at least southern Britain, I think, has got mm. more snow than normal. You know, the highlands of Scotland and things, we're used to hearing them having lots of snow, but we have got more than normal now. Um, just as well to come back on some some things here before we return to uh, our running order here. We've got Ricardo de Ponza says, uh, check out Jeff Marshall's London Underground YouTube channel. Um, and Raymond Gathergood says, you can see what your train tracker looks like here. He's put a link in there. Well, I'm hoping, it's nice of you to do that, uh, Raymond, but I'm hoping to see it for real. I have put a plug in it, but I <laughs> honestly have not switched it on yet. I was going to do that in a second, just to share with everybody at home. Um, and I think that's sort of caught up with our stuff here. So should we just switch it on? And I don't know what's going to happen now. I promise you, I haven't powered this up. All I've done is plugged a little USB charger in under here. So if we can switch it on now. Right, here we go. This is, I'm going to go switch it on. I don't know what will happen, if <coughs> anything. Oh. Oh, it's testing all the LEDs, I think, basically, isn't it? Either that's one very fast underground train. <laughs> Now, I think at the moment it's not linked up to anything. So I've got to just put a URL. Oh, I think it's going to start again. Now. Keep doing All right. That, well, in, in the next, in, if I can, I'm going to try and um, do that. But I don't want to hold everybody up and seeing everybody else, all the wonderful videos and things that other people have done as well. So let's now move on to Nigel, 2E0NLK. He hasn't got a video for us, but he sent us some photos to share. Um, he says, um, as a lot of members know, I do Airsoft. For me, that was a new name. With my boys, as a present to myself, I got an L85A2. It's a one-to-one -one replica of what the British Army use. It fires in at a 340 feet per second. Wow. Um, and for Christmas, my children got me a four-time scope and a peck box with torch red dot laser. And it also has an infrared laser. That is quite some stuff there. That, that looks serious, isn't it? Can we just go back to that other picture, Tammy? Yeah. Because I, I missed that when it was on there. Yeah. Uh, he also says the L85A2 fires a 6mm BB. Now, I've heard of BBs. They're those mm -hmm. little bullet. I can't remember what it stands for. Ballistic bullets or something? Yeah, they're so just they're toy balls. bullets. Something. They're ball bearings, balls. Oh, ball bearings. Yeah, maybe they are. And is empower battery powered using an 11.1 volt battery. And it can be set for single fire or full auto. So that's uh, Nigel sharing that with us. Wow, that does look amazing. Mm. Used cool. carefully, I think, probably, something like that. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, in a minute then, I'll try and um, do a little bit more with this. It's still tracing out that little LED is going around there. But now we're going to share with you a video that Phil G4LPP uh, shared with us. Now, I don't know if Tammy looked at this earlier. Um, I downloaded it. The Phil sent it to me um, last night, I think. I have not seen it. I have no words to go with it. I don't know what it is. So we're all intrigued to find out what Phil's G G4 LPP's unboxing is. So let's roll VT. Hello everybody. Well, today I arrived back on a long drive in the snow and the doorbell rang soon after arriving home and this was presented to me. It seems to be a parcel from Giga Parts. I don't remember ordering from them, but I'm sure we'll find out what it was. So let's do an unboxing. I have the unboxing tool. I also have my helper. So first make an incision along the tape. Now, having made the incision, we should be able to open the box. Seems well packaged. There's no damage to the parcel. So the contents should be in good order. That is very unhelpful. And then you'll notice the package contains 
a lot of air in plastic wrappers, so I feel things should be well protected. But tucked against one side of the box, not between the pieces of wrapping, is Gigaparts coupon and another Gigaparts coupon and this package which tells me this is an RT Systems WCS9700U programming software for the ICOM 9700 radio. Interestingly, this is not what I now remember ordering, which is programming software for the FT99... No, this is correct. <laughs> so, yes, 9700U programming software. Let's open it and see what this looks like. I'll return to my... I'll try not to do any damage to the internal components. Right. So in here we have the CD of the software, which is rather nicely printed with a picture of the 9700 on it. And a message saying, congratulations, you're on your way to easy radio programming. The tech support number and a getting started manual. So I feel ready to give this a try on my radio now. I may give a follow up report. 73. Oh, uh, it ended abruptly. <laughs> I'm trying to watch Phil's video. I'm also trying to set up this thing here. Anyway, brilliant. Thank you, Phil. Um, I'm glad it is what you expected it to be, and it was a true unboxing video. Yeah. Literally, he was unsealing the tape and everything else, with help from his cat. With Do you help remember from his cat. cat's name? We went to see oh, to take pictures, oh. didn't we, when we awarded him, presented the award. Do you, yeah. remember? Do you remember his name? Oh. Oscar or something? No, I can't remember now. Oh, well. Anyway, thank you for sending us that, Phil. Excellent unboxing video. Look forward to hearing how it is as well. Now, someone else who's uh, shared with us something is uh, Martin. GM0KXM. He's actually on the call as well, so we'll go to him in a moment. Um, but we've we've uh, got a video which we've downloaded. Um, I think we're best to share that first, and then we'll talk about it a bit afterwards. So, roll VT. A little under two weeks ago, the Raspberry Pi Foundation released a new product, a microcontroller based on a new chip they built, complete with a instruction book and uh, data sheet and all sorts and the cool thing is it costs 360 and it's in stock if you buy it you uh, get it in a little packaging it uh, comes off a roll as you can see it is not very large uh, for comparison here's a banana and a pi zero the normal pi and an 80 tiny here's some close-ups you might uh, Notice that the edge are castellated, so you can actually put it straight on another board and solder that on. Um, but most people probably want to put pins in it. Here's the book. It contains a getting started to the, uh, the Pi from uh, covering how to do soldering and how to plug it in and uh, get the software running on it. Um, it's very well done. There are uh, projects as well for you to try and get to grips with it and an overview of what is where, of course. And I think this would be great for somebody who's getting started or looking for some, something to do during the current lockdown. If you go to the web page for the book and you look at the bottom of the page, you'll see uh, there is a mention of some errata in a PDF that you can download. So if you click on that, you get to uh, this site where you can see the uh, error that was made you need to specify that extra parameter there and you can do a free download where you get asked for a contribution if you haven't bought the book i suppose and um, if you then download it you get the full pdf in a full size full color uh, which is also very handy as a reference to look things up later you see here what the uh, table of content looks like and so on so let's try it out. Here we have the uh, Pico. I have soldered some headers uh, at the bottom, so you can just plug it into a breadboard. Just push it in, aligned with the top numbers there. That looks good. Then you plug it into USB. That provides power and boots the Pico. 
Now to program it, we use the funny uh, Python editor, which you can download for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And we'll see what that looks like. The first time you do this, Funny will prompt you to install some software onto the Pico. Um, that is uh, rather quick and straightforward. You only have to do that once after you've done that. It will bring you straight to the editor next time. So here's the editor window. In the bottom editor, we can type uh, bits of Python, which get sent to the device and execute there. So let's try that. The ha, that actually ran on the device. Good stuff. Now let's import a machine library and define ourselves a variable called onboard LED and say that should be the machine pin number 25, which is connected to the onboard LED and that is an output pin. So now that we have the variable, we can tell it to change its value to one to switch it on and we should see a green LED light up on the board and there it is. And if you assign value zero, that switches off again. The toggle command will switch backwards and forwards between the two states of this LED, so you'll switch it off and on again repeatedly. So now let's import a timing module, and then we can make ourselves a little loop where we can then uh, toggle the LED, and then we'll use the sleep command in the new time module to sleep for, let's say, a half a second, and that should make the LED start to flash. And indeed it does. So let's now try and actually do some physical computing. So first off, we'll hook up the uh, red line on the on the right there to the 3.3 volts that you can take off the board, uh, which means that that whole column provides 3.3 power. And we do the same with a ground connection, uh, putting that in the uh, blue line on the left. So we can see that that does indeed work by uh, hooking up a little LED with a 470 ohm resistor I happen to have lying about. So let's see, we take the uh, LED, put it in the breadboard, making sure that the longer pin is at the bottom there. And then we'll put the resistor next to it and we'll feed that from our 3.3 uh, volt coming from the red line. And then to complete the circuit, we'll hook up the other end of the LED to the blue line, which is the ground. So that should show the LED going on and shining brightly. Good stuff. So if we take the uh, supply off and we put in place a little switch, uh, which I couldn't be bothered to solder together, so I just used a bit of tape to uh, hold some pins against the, uh, the button there. Apologies for that mess, but let's see if it works. Uh, push. There we go. Yep, that works as expected. Okay, so we'll take that off for the moment and we'll connect up uh, this uh, supply to a pin on the corner of the board. And then we'll see if we can actually control that switch from Python. So to do that, we define another LED. This is pin 16, still an output pin. And if we say value 1, it switches on. And if we say value 0, it switches off. So that was output. Let's try some input as well. We'll take that uh, on that uh, switch that we used previously. We'll plug that into another pin. And we'll just connect that to the uh, red line at the other end. And then we define a variable called button, make it pin 15. It's an input pin, and we have to specify that pull down value there, otherwise things don't work properly. And we should be able to print a value, which is zero, and print a value when pressed, which is one. And that seems to work. So let's try a bit more advanced program. I will define a Boolean variable called flip, and we set it initially to true. And then we go in an infinite loop and we say, if flip is true, then we'll set the onboard LED on and the red LED off. And if flip is not true, then we'll set it the opposite around. And then we change the value of flip to the opposite of flip. So it will go true, false, true, false, true, false. So that should make the LEDs flash in turn. 
we then uh, sleep depending on whether the button is pressed uh, either a short period or a long period so let's try it out we'll paste the program to be executed that runs it and we see that the leds start flashing slowly and then if we press the button they should speed up and indeed they do and of course you can save your program to the pico and then just run it independently from your computer. So that gives you a bit of a flavor. To learn more, go to the Raspberry Pi organization blog where you can read about the Pico Lite and projects that you can do with it and how it came to be and so on. And on YouTube, there's a nice uh, review by Jeff Geerling uh, of the Pi going into more details about its specifications and possibilities. Wow, now that is really something bang up to date because we only mentioned the Nano, uh, is it the Nano? Pico. Pico, sorry, a few weeks ago. Um, so anyway, I know Martin's watching at home and he's on our um, go-to meeting. So maybe we can ask him now to come on, Martin. Can you, uh, can you come on to and tell us a little bit more about it? And have you done any more with the uh, Pico since then? Uh, I haven't really done anything more with the Pico. I do have a little update uh, about it. I got an email this morning uh, informing me that they're actually printing a new version of the book because the version that's currently in print uh, has got this error that they then, you know, um, fixed online, but they're actually sending out a printed version to people who bought the initial one. So that's very good of them. That's good, yeah. So have you done anything more with it yourself in terms of... Uh... Do, do, I'm going to I'm going to put you on the spot now because I'm always put on the spot like this, and I was you know what I'm going to say, don't you? What did you buy it for, Martin? Um, yeah, well, it was there, <laughs> and there was like a buy button, and I'm like, yeah. Now, actually, I've I've been wanting to play with microcontrollers a little bit because I've used the Raspberry Pi, um, and you know that's Linux and all of that, and that's all all great, and I know my way around that, but. This is um, different in that you write a program and you put it on the microcontroller and that's all that happens there. Um, so I actually wanted to have a play with that and uh, my, my previous attempts at various other implementations uh, didn't get all that far. And uh, with these, uh, these fantastic uh, documentation uh, resources, uh, I'm like, well, great, let's, uh, let's have a play. Yeah, we should tell everybody at home as well who didn't notice when we mentioned it a few weeks ago. The one of the incredible things about that is that that board, which is a complete microcontroller board, is three pounds sixty, isn't it? I think something like that. Yeah. Which is extraordinary, um, really, to buy a mini computer for that sort of money, isn't it? Exactly. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very excited. I wasn't going to open it. Like it, it I bought it and it turned up, and I was, I'm actually I was soldering together a. Uh, a radio project and I'm like no I'm not going to open that and then it turned up and then I thought I'll just open it and have a look and make sure all the parts are there so I did that and then I'm like well actually let's see if it works and well yeah well, you know that's how these things go. You're much better than me because as you can see <laughs> I, I get things and I think that's really good and I put it on a shelf or in that infamous drawer and don't actually get around to doing anything for a while but anyway thank you ever so much for sharing that I think you were also going to mention that you had an update um, on the QRP Labs as well, didn't it? The other project you were uh, making, the um, GPS receiver. Yeah, was was that video show? No, I wasn't here last week. No, so I don't no, uh, we showed it uh, before. I think, I think we did. It was a few weeks ago. I think a few weeks ago, we showed that. I think so. Okay. But right. it's just that they've they've um, discontinued yes. and made another one, haven't they? Well, that's it. So basically, the clock. The, there's two parts to it um, for memory. Uh, which is the the clock display part and then there's a gps module that plugs into it and the um the gps module that uh, that was available for that uh, has now changed uh, the old version you can't get anymore the new version is is a little different uh, it doesn't have the antenna the patch antenna on the board um so you have to use an external antenna which you get delivered uh with the device i believe so that's uh, I think that actually works better because it means you don't have to take the, um, uh, you, you, you know, I ended up drilling a hole in my case and I was a pain, pain in the neck. Mm. Um, this way you just plug it into the back. I think it's a two meter lead or so. So you can then put the antenna part uh, by your window where you're perhaps more likely to pick up satellites. Okay. So, yeah. Thanks cool. for updating on that. And thanks again for that video. That was really good. 
on the uh, that's the first one I've, first time I've seen one working as well so mm. thank you very much for sharing that on the Pico cool thanks Martin great um Okay, now while, and I, I, it's, see, it feels rude not to even watch the, some of these videos fully, but um, I, I have been playing around with this, and I did work out in the end how to, to get this map to work. Um, so, and this is how it was. I think, Tammy, if you can put me on camera four, I think we are now. Camera one. Um, or camera one, right, there we go. Uh, let me try to focus <laughs> on. Now this, as far as I know, it's not actually focused yet, is it? Here we go. Maybe it's because it's too bright, actually. Here we go, let's get it down here. It's live, I believe. This is now live. So if we wait and watch enough, we should see a light moving. I wonder why it's so not blurry. focused. Yeah. I think it probably is the fact that it's light, mm. you know. Now, if we watch it enough, I'll keep it on. I'll tell you in a minute. Oh, yeah, there was one move there. Look, see them flashing just there, I think. That's still blurry. So. It is, isn't it? I don't know why that is. We don't know. if it was... These sort of troubles yet, normally? Anyway. Okay, well, you can see the idea. You can see it flashing. See that? They're, they're moving trains. That's what you bought me for Christmas, Tammy. Yep, yeah, excellent. Thank you. You got what out I, the box. All, all it was, I just plugged it in. This is just providing power. This is a Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi module, actually, this one here. Um, and what I had to do, I'm just going to cover this just in case someone else watches this, but... This is a code that's written on the back of my unit. This is what I couldn't find at first. I looked in the box. This is a unique code that you enter into a web address that they give you. You then link up to the Wi-Fi. Then you basically can talk to this board through the Wi-Fi because you link to it. And then you can give it the um, uh, Wi-Fi code so that the board picks up the Wi-Fi itself. And now it's running completely autonomously on its own. Um, sorry that's out of focus. That's a shame. Actually, should we try the other... If we try the other camera, Tammy, camera two, maybe that's better. I think it's just the fact it's bright, you know, if you look at it, because everything else is crisp on there. Anyway, brilliant. Thank you for my Christmas present. That's okay. I did get to use it. <laughs> anyway, less, less of us. Let's go around and see who, who's next. Now, uh, John m 6 jau sent us this video. He says, I've done a short unboxing video of a 13 amp socket tester from Banggood, which is one of these Chinese suppliers. Uh, should be of interest to at least some of the members, although potentially everybody could use one, he says. So without further ado, let's look at John's unboxing video. Hello, it's John M6JAU here. I thought to uh, try a bit of uh, unboxing on this item that I found advertised online from my favorite Chinese supplier, Banggood, uh, £8.24 including shipping. I've uh, cheated a little here, I've cut the pack open to start with. So, what have we got inside? One cardboard box, one socket tester. Got a picture of it. Boring side. Ah, that's different. No voltmeter? Voltmeter. Hopefully what we've got inside has got the voltmeter because that's what I ordered. Some instructions. No doubt they'll be in Chinese English. So we throw those aside. One device. Now you need to make sure if you buy one of these that you order the one with the right kind of pins. It comes in three versions American, European and UK. So this has obviously got the uh, UK pins. And on the front we have three LEDs, uh, a chart to tell you what it all means and a voltmeter. And then down at the bottom, it's a push button and another lamp. Um, and that's for testing uh, RCDs, make some trip. Uh, we won't be testing that because I haven't got one. We'll give it a quick try on some mains though. Here's a socket I prepared earlier. 
plug it in. And uh, well, there we go. Two LEDs on, one off. Correct wiring. And uh, 239 volts. And it's AC. That's good. Now I wonder if we can induce a fault. If I jiggle it out of the socket, I wonder if I can get a pin to dis just one pin to disconnect. Yeah, there we go. So central LED only means open neutral. So I've obviously managed to get the neutral pin to stop connecting without cutting the plug off the extension lead and messing about um, there's no good way of testing the other options so uh, I think that's the end of today's testing that's, that's good I've never seen one of those have you tell me well, no, you worked uh, for an electrician company, electrical contractors. So. Am, I, am I allowed to fully confess and say I wasn't really watching the video? Because I'm really trying to get my, my Lego finished. <laughs> I think this is the time to share with you at home that where you've been watching the videos and blissful <laughs> quiet, I now regret slightly what I chose to give Tammy because <laughs> this is the noise that we hear. Come on, do with the noise. It's <laughs> all through everything, apart from when we're on, our mics are on. That's what... I hear all the time. <laughs> so Tammy, anyway. No, but, but, I'm not going to show it just yet. Oh. No, 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 you'll have to But wait. it is it's genuine, just, isn't it? I mean, what you're building here finished. is only those bits that you got. Yeah. What do you think she's building, everybody? Hmm. Okay. Well, well, uh, yeah. Drop us a line. If you think, by the way, this is a true thing. So if you're on BATC <laughs> or Facebook and you can guess what Tammy is making, you don't think you can see it on the camera, um, then um, jot it down now. If you can guess what she's making, I can sort of see. I'm not sure what it is yet, but... <laughs> Thanks. I don't think she knows what it is yet. I do know what it is. I think you're just making something and then see what it looks like closest. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we're nearly there, guys. I know this is a, a late night, as it were, but I said we've got lots of wonderful things to show you. Um, and now we're going to go over to one of our guys at home um, uh, because he's going to do this live. Yes, Steve, I'm talking about you. Uh, Steve and Carol there. Um, we're going to come to you now and you're going to do a live unboxing for us, aren't you, Steve? Indeed I am. Okay, Hello, everybody. Um, before we start, I'd just like to mention that uh, I think those little Pico uh, Raspberry Pis would be brilliant for you to get loads of those in the drawer. <laughs> Do you ever give up? <laughs> That's not fair. Well, the first, first thing I have uh, tonight to unbox is I've got two things which are diagnostic tools. This one is a vehicle diagnostic tool. I don't think it's Hold it, hold it nice and still if you can, though, Steve. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. Oh, this comes from uh, Aldi, the famous uh, Aldi. What the supermarket? The supermarket. Yeah, I bought it online. I have. Uh, it's a very bad thing to have, actually, but I have the app on my phone, and it tells me when things come in, and I have, just have to buy them. I didn't even so know that you could. Is... Seriously, Steve, I didn't know that. Uh, maybe I'm not the only. Maybe I'm not the only one who didn't know that you could buy things online from Aldi like that. I really didn't. It's especially useful because if I go into Aldi, I usually go through the bit in the middle and forget about the food and I end up coming home with loads of uh, tools and things. Is that right, Carol? <laughs> that... She doesn't go with me. She's not allowed. So, but you haven't got any food in the house, but you've got lots of gadgets that you, you, you like that. Well, she's uh, the uh, supervisory adult, you see, so I don't take her with me. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll let you get on anyway. Earlier on, she did say that you shouldn't be making Tammy do the Lego because she's got enough to do as it is. Yeah, that's what I think. I tell you, the noise, I, okay, I will so regret. Anyway, so basically, get... what, what this device does, it's called an OBD2, which is an onboard diagnostics uh, fault reader. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Oh, well, this is, the, uh, this is the unit, so let's get that out. And basically, that uh, is the uh, reader. And this is the plug that plugs into any vehicle newer than, I think it's about 1996. You'll have a 
a port that this plugs into and uh, it, in this display here it gives you a fault code and I think in the box here we have a manual which has about 900 different fault codes. Wow. I mean, I'm learning a lot here, Steve, because I didn't know, maybe some of the viewers as well didn't know, that there was a standard for a start. I, I assumed this was proprietary to the manufacturers, both the plug and the sort of software and the um, communications. But you're saying there's a standard now? Yeah, it's called OB, uh, whatever it is, um, OBD, yeah, the Onboard Diagnostics. That is a, a standard worldwide. Okay. And that there are in here, and let me just tell you how many faults there are that you can detect. 999. Wow. Anything after 1996 that are fitted with this. And also it does the CAN, which is like the CAN bus thing that BMW's had for a while. So um, if there's a fault, like let's say, um, I don't know, right headlamp bulb not making connection or something, there's a standard format of, of reporting that, that that device will show, will it? Yes, there is. Anything that comes up on the onboard computer... So we'll have like things like this throttle sensor position, uh, correlation, ambient air temperature sensor, um, and it will do multi-cylinder uh, engines as well. You can get everything up to uh, a, v, a V8, I think, in here, and it'll tell you which spark plug's not working and all that sort of stuff. Very clever bit of that kit. That is good. I tried it on my car and it uh, didn't have any faults actually to uh, detect, but I'm sure <laughs> that's a good it thing. <laughs> well, then, Steve, take my yeah. advice. You just need to take it out, put it in this box, and put it away in the drawer. Yeah, you're right. Well, I do actually have another system can... uh, at home which um, has a CD that you can plug in and it uh, goes to your laptop, and that isn't quite the same. It does some of the same stuff, but it allows you to alter things in the car. Like on my radio in the car, it comes with um, extra auxiliaries on it that are not activated from you, so you can activate things like that. And can yeah, I just ask how much that is? I'm sure a lot of people will be interested to know, roughly. It was sixteen ninety nine. Wow. Delivered. I thought, honestly, I thought you were going to say at least 40 or £50. Pounds. No, well, the thing is, though, if you go to the garage and they tell you that you're air monitoring sensor is gone you don't know do you but with this you do well 17 quid as well that's really good and that's delivered as well very good that's delivered yes thanks i think you've done yeah. us a service there, as well as showing us an unboxing i think you've you know probably uh, i'm sure i'm sure that i won't be the only one who's thinking maybe i could use one of those i've got a big enough drawer on this right anyway steve <laughs> what's next the second thing is a diagnostics uh, kit for us human beings and it's one of these I'll get it close so you can see what it is. Hopefully, we'll stay still. All right. That's oh. called pulse oximeter. Some of you have probably got these already. Um, I saw something on YouTube about them and uh, how useful they are in times of COVID because one of the first symptoms you have of COVID is that the oxygen in your bloodstream goes low. Um, so, what this device gives you is a a percentage of oxygen in your uh, arterial bloodstream. So um, and it does that by uh, shining a light through your finger. You've probably seen these things at the hospital when you go there. It's one of the first things they give you. We anyway, open the box and what have you got in it? The oximeter. So let's pop that out and have a look. Small device. These are about uh, anything between 10 and 20 pounds. I think I paid 11 pounds 50 for this one. Um, it doesn't come with batteries, but it takes two triple A's in the back here. Okay. Um, and basically, it's very simple. You just open it up, pop your finger in. It's got to be the correct finger. And uh, I'm not uh, oh. being rude here. But I, I read online that the finger has to be that one there or your thumb. They're the best ones. That was tested by uh, health professionals, apparently. Is that because they're the bigger or thicker? I don't know exactly why. I think that's because there's a pulse going to this one that's better than the others. But I think okay. uh, it's minimal anyway, the difference. But so this is the one I always use anyway. So basically, pop on your finger. You push this button there, and it makes a beeping noise. And it comes up with this. Uh, 
I don't well, think we're going to be able to see the detail on that, Steve. But so, t can you just tell us what that's saying? It says it gives you a percentage. Uh, if I get it closer, maybe you can. Well, that's saying ninety-six at one end, and the other is, I believe, eighty-two. The eighty-two is my pulse rate. Okay. Any anywhere between about uh, seventy and a hundred is good. Do you mean you pulse know, now or oxygen? oxygen? The, no, that's the pulse. Yeah, the, the oxygen needs to needs to be above uh, about 92. Right, um, okay. If it's down to 90, you need to be calling the doctor or getting to yeah, hospital pulse, quickly. Because um, that means you've got no hardly any oxygen in your blood or not enough to live properly. And you can end up with tissue damage, including the brain and the heart. So that's mm -hmm. the thing. So these are a bit of insurance, really. If you're feeling a bit down, you get COVID, you can uh, monitor what it's doing to your body. So is this one of those things that maybe, I'm just I'm guessing that, not that we're, we're offering any medical advice here, seriously, for anybody watching this at home, but I mean, some of these things you have symptoms like a dry cough and, um, uh, and, and things like that. Was this, you may not actually know, it's not something you can see or feel, is it really, your oxygen level? So I guess this, this might be useful for that. It is, yeah. You, you'll you'll know that you're not breathing very well, so that would be your first uh, uh, point of reference, I think. And then you could check your oxygen level because if you're not breathing well and your lungs aren't working properly, you're not getting enough oxygen into your blood, mm. which is not a good thing. No. Obviously, if it's any anywhere below about ninety, you need to consult a doctor or get to the hospital quite quickly. Right. Okay. But, you know, Useful bit of kit. But we do have one final thing to show. Have you got any questions about this before I put it away? No, I will it just tell like you though, Steve, before you move on completely. Oh, it there's looks one. Like three of us have got them at least on the on the call. Oh, so, there we go. Um, and you're uh, is the 98 your blood oxygen there? No, no, 98 is the oxygen, and 95 is the heart rate. Yeah. Is the heart rate? Well, that's quite a fast heart rate. You must be excited I to ran watch. to get the damn thing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were, you should have said you were so excited to watch NARC Live. That's what you really should have said. Anyway, thank you, Sonny, for that. Um, I will just tell you one thing, a couple of things, Steve, that people are writing comments on it, and I'm going to tell you in a moment what people are saying as well, what they think Tammy is making. Um, Nigel Lake, who many of you know, to Nigel too, he's here on OK, he's, he's um, someone who gets involved with real-life recoveries of vehicles and things. He says it'll only work when the engine management comes on. So that's what he said. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, and, um, yeah, that's right. And something else much more serious um, uh, and useful, um, Ricardo de Ponza says not ABS or airbags. Apparently they don't show those. Um, but this is more important, I thought. This was probably a worthwhile warning from Rick M7 GMT. He says, worth mentioning that you should never leave Bluetooth devices connected to your car because thieves can use them to gain access to your vehicle. Right. So that's worth thinking about. I think that one plugged in, though, the one, you, your management system, didn't it? It wasn't Bluetooth. It does, yeah. They, there are ones you can get with Bluetooth that uh, connect to your phone, I believe. But uh, no, this is, uh, this is definitely just um, connected by wire. Well, actually, that's uh, probably a good thing then that Rick said that as well. Um, and yeah. uh, just coming back on the oximeter, or oximeter, as you, you've just said, Michelle, uh, this is Richard M6 UES, says that Michelle has an oximeter similar to you. Um, you can also get them with a cable attachment to a little box which logs data over a period of time. So there we are. Yeah. Well, now, this, this one, this will store uh, information and you can recall it and you can uh, connect this to your phone as well, which is quite useful. Amazing, for, was... for that much money, for £11. It's, um... Yeah, made in China, of course. Yeah, but um, okay, well, hopefully, as long as you can trust the information from it, I guess, they could be very useful things, because you wouldn't normally, I'm guessing a few years ago, those sort of things would have cost a lot, so much money that people wouldn't, most people wouldn't have something like that at home. No. Mine was six pounds on eBay, David. Sorry? Mine was six pounds on eBay. Six pounds? Oh, well. Okay, very cheap then. All right. Um, so, Steve, back to you for your final unboxing, I think. Yes. Uh, let's get up here to the unboxing area. Right. Uh, this is something that uh, Carol bought me for Christmas. Um, and 
It's not electronic at all, as far as I know, although there may, there may be uh, particles in it for tagging. So uh, let's have a look and see what we've got. This is a surprise to me. Oh, it's Captain Morgan. Oh. Uh, so the instructions on it say something, oh, drink aware and drink responsibly. So I think we'd better just try it and make sure it works fine. <laughs> Put something here for Carol. Um, can I just say, I'm really pleased that you did the unboxing the other two things first, because if you'd have done this one first, you probably wouldn't have got this far, would you? No, probably not. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see that, um, but that's a sort of a golden colour. Yeah. And it's uh, called spiced rum. And what we do is, we, this is a thing we call Coca-Cola. Have you right. seen that before? <laughs> I have seen that before, yes. Okay, we'll just unbox this as well. You didn't shake it up, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have. <laughs> Be careful with that stuff, mate. I've had a lot of that. <laughs> what was that, Don? <laughs> Come again, Don? No, that was Don, man. It's my, uh, I, I actually prefer the... I actually prefer Bacardi, but uh, Captain Morgan is lovely. So you get, you do get Captain Cheers, Morgan out there, do you? Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Steve. Thank you ever so much. Brilliant. Thanks for your unboxing there as well. By the He's way, a I, He's a, a whisk. And that's that's to clean the snow off Cody. Yeah, well, I, I was using the one that I make omelettes with, and she decided that it was a bit more hygienic, yeah. but she gave me one. I think that probably is a good idea, yes. At least wash it first, anyway. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye, <laughs> Carol and uh, Steve. And do you know what? I think that's it. You reckon? I do. Whatever is this? In the last few minutes, this... Um, this, this project has... Um, I'll do this, Tammy. Don't worry about this. I'll, I'll, I'll do the button <laughs> well, pushing for a minute. We should see if anybody else has anything That's true, I suppose. Say. Tammy's got ready for the grand finale of what she's made here. Um, just to go everybody at home now, let's, let's have a look at them at home. Uh, there's a few we haven't spoken to. We haven't spoken to Albert or Spiros or Bob um, uh, or uh, who else? Mike, yeah. So have, do any of you guys in particular, have you got anything to share with us? No? Thumbs up if you'd like to speak. Yeah. You don't have to. Bob. Um, I've got a small item that I'm using that I got. I thought it was very good. I'll just show it to you. I can't disconnect it because um, I'm using it. it. Because I've got my radio over there and I've got the computer over here, this headset, I've got between the two. So I've got this smashing little stick. If I can show it up in the right place there. That's it. It came with all the leads, all these all these extra leads mm -hmm. comes with it. And I can plug in one one set of headphones and have two two inputs on it. And you can switch the volume up and down. Um oh, it's going out for it because again I don't know where I'm going. That's it. I can switch the volume up and down for the for the earphones. The microphone's going through it. I can mute it. And I can switch between the two A and B. So this little thing I got thirteen quid. And was that you, know, you just was, it. was that actually made and assembled, Bob, or did you have to make that yeah, one up? I'm like that in the box. Um, wow. Well. Oh, That's the box that arrived in. Unfortunately, I, uh, I had unboxed it. As you can see, it comes in a nice box. Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, we can see the box. That's great. Yep. Yeah, it's the pack, you know what I mean? I, I keep everything I do. Yeah. And um, a smash it at the item with instructions, or destructions, whichever you want. Yes. But, um, yeah, and um, it's got a USB lead in it. I've got no idea why they put the USB lead in there, because it's not wanted on anything. There's no USB connection, nothing. Does it have to but, be powered, Bob? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's using just purely... As you can see, um, well, you will be able to see it. That, that's the microphone, that's the, that's the speakers, and this is it coming out for, for, for my headset that I've got on here now. That's lovely. There's nothing else at all. So I thought it was a great, great little idea. And for its price, you can't go wrong. No, it's brilliant. Thank you ever so much for sharing that with us. 
Yeah, all right. Sorry about that. I could have I could have shown it as I was unboxing it, but unfortunately, I'd already unboxed it and we're using it. <laughs> Let me tell you, Bob. Most normal people, when they receive something, they do unbox it and unpack it and use it. It's just me, I think, probably. <laughs> but right. anyway, thank thank you very much for sharing that with us, Bob. I've got I've got over there. I've got my grandson. I bought in the desk in a, a twin monitor stand that I'm going over to his house on on. Um, Saturday, and I'm going to put it all together for him. Um, right, so there. Oh, yeah, we can see the flat pack, yeah. That's it, the flat pack and the little box above it, that one there, that's the actual um, monitor stand, the dual one, and this is the flat pack uh, desktop. So, got that. So, you know, uh, what else can I do for a grandson? Absolutely <laughs> lovely stuff. All right, Bob, thank you ever so much for joining us and uh, sharing us with that lovely um, headphone switcher control volume yeah, control I, I as well great i think it's great best thing i've, I've had for ages and for 13 quid you can't make it no you can the volume control and all the little plugs and everything you know on on both sides you just you just cannot make it for that price no so that's why i bought it all excellent right. yeah thanks a lot mate thanks for joining us thank you okay just as good as quickly go back to everybody um oh we've got kevin now kevin what are you doing I'm one for you. I thought that in the spirit of things, since that was Wednesday night, half past nine, best be out mobile, really. And I go to me and to me is 70 cents. It's all the same thing, really, isn't it? I know you can't really see my face, but uh, if I turn around a bit, street lights. <laughs> not really, uh, not really too different. Are you really out there, or is this some kind of video trick? No, it's uh, it's not uh, it's not any trickery. I'm out. Uh, in fact, right behind me now is the doctor's surgery. Oh, yes. You're doing one of those I weird really... walkabouts now at night. But the other night when we were talking, it was uh, up past 11, I think, or something. Yeah, it was 11, yeah. And it was, uh, it was the snow on the ground was a lot worse than this. But I guess it is a safer time, as someone said earlier. I think Ted said earlier, it's a safer time to go for a walk, I guess. When... Well, I'm, I'm walking up the road. There is, uh, I haven't seen any sign of any cars at all, I don't think, since I've been out. And when you think how far I've walked. Yeah. Amazing, really. Yeah. Can you get me some fish and chips, Kevin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd be lucky. All right. Yeah. Thank you for joining us again, Kevin. Thank you. Yes. Let's go back to the uh, group and just... Um... Um, well, there's just one thing. Um, All right. Ken is asking, what is the name of Bob's headphone gadget, please? So, Bob, could you um, could you just possibly tell us if I get back? It's a... Um... Let us do the box. It's a um, something there. Ob it's got a blinking label right over where the name is. <laughs> oh. uh, it's a O a Q sound. This is there. This is a box. A Q sound. Um, let me just see if I can. Oh no. On. Um, uh, let me get this label off. Let me get this silly label they put over the top. Let me just. Perhaps he could send a link. Uh, one little bear. One little bear. Okay. It. And it is a, yeah, there's the rest of it underneath. Multi function, multi function radio, uh, um, audio switcher. Oh, audio switcher, yeah. Multi function audio switcher. So there we are, Ken. Hopefully you can see that. One little bear. Um, Martin's yeah. put a link on there as well and said that uh, there's another one. Oh, yes, I see. There's, there's the model. Right. The different ones they use and they put the same box, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's what is it? M like MC102? That's it. MC102. In black. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Bob. And okay, um, uh, hopefully you got that, Ken. And Martin said um, and it, he's found one called a Knob Sound two-way... Two 3.5 millimeter stereo audio switcher, passive headphone splitter selector. And Ken's done that as well. That's for those of you not on Facebook and on the other channel. Um, Dave uh, G8ADM, he says um, it's a nice drink. The one that Steve was unboxing. I don't know if Steve's still there Steve's now, probably. Steve's actually waving. He's waving. Do we want to go back to Steve? Is he in his state, do you think, to, to sort of talk to <laughs> after drinking like that? And we're going to go to... to to ask you, Dave, the question, if you don't mind, mm, yeah. about the um, the train thing that you got. 
How do you fit that in your pocket when you're going on the underground? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to, because when you've got when you're on the underground, um, can we go to camera one, Tammy? And when we go to when you're on the underground, you don't really need to see it. There we go. We're still. I think it's just. I honestly do think it's just that the the bulbs are too bright for it. You know. Just put it. Put it down like that. No, it's because it's they're bright. There you go. Anyway, no, you won't need to do that. I, <laughs> I promise you, look. But look, at see that there's something coming down this line here. But what I will need to do is get a, a map of the London Underground to work out what all these lines are. That's really good, isn't it? Do you see these all changing? That's cool. I think you'll find there's a YouTube video on that, Dave. Yeah, I, I shall... <laughs> I shall... I tell you what, I shall... <laughs> When it's safe to do so, which will, I think it'll be some time, but I'll, I'll, it'll be if you see if you see someone sitting on Liverpool Street Station with a battery pack and this thing in their hand, it'll be me just working out whether there's a good service on the Northern Line. I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, uh, just a few other messages. Um, pardon? I think it would look very nice framed. <laughs> yeah. Well, it might. It better than in a box, anyway. That's for sure. Um, Rick M7 GMT comes back and says that ODB port hacking is fun, but just remember to unplug it for normal use. And he's put a link there. That's on BATC. We nearly are, really are at the end, and we've been on in two hours. Have we still got people watching this, do you think? I think we might have a few. Yeah, good. Because um, we nearly are there. I think that's all the formal unboxings that we've got. Uh, Don, did he want to come on? Oh, no, we've got Albert, Albert there. Albert looks like he's got something Let's, in his Albert, hand Albert, we'll there. come to you. Okay, speak, my man. We can hear you and see you in a moment. There we go. Is that, yeah, I think we're there. Oh, there, that's a really terrible line. Uh, this is another thing I got off of uh, uh, Banggood. I'm going to have to hold it really steady here because my camera is terrible. Um, it was basically an LED Canton tower. I've been working on this over Christmas, and as you can see, I haven't got very far. Um, oh. But there's, there's seven layers on out of 36 to do. Wow. So uh, eventually, this is supposed to be about a metre tall, I think. And you can see what? underneath, if I hold it steady. Heavens above. All the, uh, yeah, all the various microcontrollers under there. And then I think in the, uh, oh, no, I've got to go this side. Uh, in this side, there's a Bluetooth module on here that you can then control it with your phone, I think, um, and play music through it or Heavens something above. like that to that effect. Just, I'll Albert, run, 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 run past us again how many LEDs are there and how many... And you say there's going to be a metre tall? Yeah, it's going to be a metre tall. So it's, it's basically it's a dot matrix system. So there's 36 LEDs going round and then it's 36 uh, layers tall. Um, you can't... It's very difficult to see, but there's a, there's a section of wires in here that all go back down to the board... Um, for the negative, um, for the uh, for the cathode uh, yeah. feed, and then the anodes all come up the side. And I presume so you can basically. Sorry. Sorry. David. No, you go ahead. Go ahead, girl. But uh, yeah, and then you can basically it'll turn each LED on individually, and they are RGB LEDs as well, so they are addressable. <laughs> I guess through the amount of voltage it sends them, or something like that. But it's it's quite incredible. And it does come with a remote like everything else that um, oh my goodness. seems to be on today. I mean, you, I think it, you're quite sorry, new. Go you're, ahead, no. Yeah, you're quite new to this. I mean, you're an M7, and not just because you're an M7, but because you only did your course with us, what, but just over a year, year and a half ago, something like this. Is this one of the... This seems to be not a beginner's kit to me. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, yeah, I, I guess not. A, I've always enjoyed soldering and always messed around with soldering arms and then found all this stuff on the um, Banggood website and thought, oh, it seems like quite a good fun thing to make. And um, I did, I think when we spoke last, I, uh, uh, I made a load of Christmas, or had a load of Christmas trees that I made um, off the website that were addressable LEDs as well. Um, but I, I got off there basically to give to people for gifts or whatever to, to make something and then mm. as a Christmas Eve gift. Um, and then saw these as well. And the other one was the little FM radio that I've got sitting to the side of me. Um, but this is just, this is one of those things that's extremely fiddly to do. Um, I'll go and get the, uh, I'll go and grab the uh, little template because you get a template with it as well. 
I must just say as well, I ought to say that Tammy is making something, it's not as big as that is going to be, but you're making a cube of LED <laughs> kit thing, aren't you? Yeah. Which is a bit similar okay. idea, I think. But that, but that's, oh, yes. that, that yeah, is, that's going to be a metre tall. That's just huge. Yeah, I, I've got the cube up there. It's an eight by eight one. I think that's, is that, is that what she's got? I think I've got a five by five, actually. So I've got a smaller one. So. Okay, you're. Yeah, you're probably better off for that because it this just takes so long, and I've got all the this is I've got there's four of these, and um, like you say, you put all the little LEDs in, and then you solder them all up wow. into a, and then you have to bend them as well, because um, there as you can probably well, actually if I tape it that way, yeah, you can see they're all all slightly bent on on one way, and it's just yeah. It's quite cool once it's going. That's going to be quite bright to begin with. But you can do so many different things with the remote. Yeah, oh, it's going to be... I didn't know you'd finished yeah. it. Oh, my goodness. Well, you, there's a... I can't get it onto the mode now. There's a, there's a special... There you go. There's a special mode you can do. Well, it's very delayed now. Um, in which you can turn change the LEDs so you can test them oh, all working or whatever as you build it. That's excellent, isn't it? So you can press the button. Unfortunately, it's a bit delayed and they'll go go round and round. I think you can do it by layer as well. Oh, yeah, there you go. See, I've got one. There's one at the bottom. Oh, you can't see it very well on there. But um, it's it's not in sync with the rest of them. It's, that it's, is extraordinary, it's though. Forever. I mean, how many, yeah. and, and um, just quickly, how many LEDs have you done, have you got on there, do you think, or how many is in the whole kit? I've got up to layer, uh, I'm on, I'm on round seven out of 36. Wow. So, so it's, yeah. It's hundreds of LEDs, wow. Yeah. Well, I counted the pack up and it comes with 12, over 1,200 LEDs to, um, that's twelve hundred. <laughs> My <laughs> goodness me! Well, I tell you what, I think you'd, uh, Albert, you'd win the prize for getting the giving the best lockdown project to keep you busy. I don't know where you've gone now, actually, but um, oh, I think yeah, I think it's gone to gone, there. We go. Gone there. Yeah, I think yeah, you've, yeah. you've you've won. The, if we had a prize for the best lockdown project <laughs> to choose, I reckon that's it. Twelve hundred LEDs. Yeah, and you need to build it by the time we next go to the club, so you need to bring it, and so we can properly oh, see it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good but then you'll have to. It. But mind you, you'll have to work out how to safely transport it. Which, <laughs> yeah. For the time, that's, that's a meter tall. What I'm very conscious of. I mean, the kit costs only about thirty-six quid. Oh. But um, yeah, it's just uh, it is a lot of man hours to physically sit there. You have to bend them all over, cut them, and then solder them all in a row, and then bend them again. And oh, it's it's taken it's taken a long while, but I am getting there. It is it's one of them satisfying things that I get another layer on, and um, and yeah. <laughs> well, you have to keep us updated with your progress. Definitely. I sh I'll have to do that. Yeah, I'll have to. Um, I'll add a new another few layers on the next couple of weeks, and then. Uh, I'll perhaps do a video and, and send it in. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Or yeah. join us on here in the next interactive or something like yeah. that and show us how you're doing. Yeah. Great. Thank you ever so much, Albert. Well done. Take care. Excellent. And you. Thank you. Wow. That's a brilliant thing. Now, I just better go to everybody else at home now and just see if anybody yeah. else... Uh, stick a thumb up if you've got anything else you want to share with us, please, at home there. Don, did you have something? I can't remember. Did you... I know you've shown us your uh, weather there. Oh, Don's just gone. Unfortunately, yeah. we can hear you, John. Don, anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shut the camera off. No, I'm good. Thank you. That's what I wanted to show you. Um, uh, it's still coming down a little bit, and uh, go about a got about a quarter inch on my car. So there you go. All right. Well, I think this time, just for once, I think the Brits have got a bit more snow than you guys. But I'm sure that won't last. Anyway, thanks for joining yes, us. Yes, and uh, that's, that's that 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 is uh, in, indeed surprising, but not uncommon. <laughs> All right, Don. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks to everybody for joining us tonight. I think we're sort of through everything is, now. Yeah, is everybody that except is that, for it, I think really... we've talked to just about everybody now. I think Mike. We haven't spoken to you. Come on, let's go to Mike, cause, and then they will make the complete set. Mike. 
Hello there. Good evening, everybody. It's been really interesting this evening. We've covered a lot of topics, and it's been really interesting. So, And it's been good to see the boxes unravel, because it's almost like uh, a present by a, by a proxy. You know, you're not <laughs> sure what you're going to get until the box finally opens. So, no, and... So it's been really and genuinely, we didn't we didn't see uh, all the videos either because no. some of them just came in and we just didn't have time. We've been at work today and until sort of three o'clock or so when we start putting this all together. So uh, we didn't know either. So it's been a great surprise for us as much as you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very Mike. much for joining us, Mike. Right, Thank I think you. I think we better because it's now 20, 20 minutes to ten. Yes, yeah, past my um, bedtime. I think a couple of people already said they're now going to go home. Um, uh, someone, uh, Wolfgang, DL1BJV, so Wolfgang, I guess you're in Germany somewhere, uh, says, thanks, enjoyed watching, and someone mentioned fish and chips, I really miss them, he says, 7-3 <laughs> to everybody. Uh, and Richard M6, uh, M6 UES says, brilliant, most interesting evening, thanks Dave and Tammy for pulling it all together, but actually, as I said before, you guys are the stars, because most of this content has come from you, so thanks for that. Um, and everybody else who's joined us, really. And I think, really, we now need to um, go back to Tammy and see what she's done with that box of well, Lego. I can't that's... actually use my camera because it's a little bit big. So, But everybody, you'll all be proud of me because I've built a house. But it's a little bit more special because um, it's got lots of aerials on it. Oh, that's what they are. There you go. You have used as well. If you had a competition to use as many bricks, because we have only got really a oh, little no, handful some, of bricks. There's oh, there's there. some more in there. Yeah. Okay. So if I can, oh, get a bit closer. There you go. See so this you all can going see wrong. my house. I've got an antenna here. Oh yeah, I've I see. I've got an antenna here, and obviously I've got a massive tower there with some antenna on the top, and then round this side, if I don't lose it, we've got another antenna just on the side there. And then, oh, it's wobbling. <laughs> and then just a little something on the back there as well. So there you go. You, hadn't, you had no idea. I had no idea what I was going to do. I, I, I first saw the little windows and I thought, oh, I could make a house. And then I saw these other bits and thought, oh, I can make an antenna with that. Well done, Tammy. So there you go. She's risen to the challenge. Yep. No plans or anything, just a load of Lego. I'll take a few pictures of it and then add them so people can see it in more detail. I'm sure we well, would love to see what else you built with all that stuff as well, all the <laughs> Lego and things as well. What a noisy gift, though. Yeah. Do you know, it's something you can invent. It would be a quiet Lego. Not all the noise. Of well, it's not necessarily the putting it together. It's the... Um, it's the yeah, exactly. Tell me about it. You want. <laughs> anyway, Tammy, thank you very much. But most of all, as I said to uh, you all, thank you ever so much to everybody tonight for joining in. We've got two and a quarter hours we've filled with stuff and most of it's come from you. The pictures of the snow, uh, the videos, the unboxing, the, pic the uh, still pictures, everything else as well. So we've really enjoyed it. I hope you have as well at home. Just to quickly um, just say what's happening, remind you that on the, the, uh, for the club this week, Saturday, we've got Koblenz Sked, 7.135 megahertz at 10 a.m. Local talk in as well on 145250. If you've never joined, you're most welcome. You don't have to be a member of NARC as well. We're twins, Norwich, our nearest city, because yeah, I know we've got a lot of people watching all over the place. Um, our twin city, um, our, our nearest city, sorry, is Norwich, and that's twinned with Koblenz in Germany. And that's why every month the two radio clubs, Norfolk Amateur Radio Club and the, the club in Germany, make contact. At Koblenz. So that's happening 7.135 megs, 10 a.m. local. Go on, surprise us. Get on there if you can. And on Monday, the 15th of February, it's our Monday night informal net with uh, Steve G3VA with that subject of desert island discs and favourite music. And what item would you take? Would you not want to go there without? Uh, the CW net is at half past eight. And as I said, next Wednesday here on the 17th of February, a little bit more formal. It's we're going to look, we're going to talk and meet Rob Sherwood famous for the Sherwood ratings. If you looked at receivers and things, the, the ratings that tends to be the universal standard that most people believe, he tests all new rigs and compares them and gets the details. What we'll be finding out from Rob is how he does that and why he's become the pretty much the respected standard for that sort of thing. As always, don't forget to send us your stories and uh, everything else to uh, drop a line to this address, radio at dcpmicro.com. 
If you have just joined us or stumbled upon us on BATC or Facebook, we're the Norfolk Amateur Radio Club, and this is what we do every Wednesday night to keep our club together. We've got a bunch of lovely members who, who join us, but everybody is welcome, so don't be afraid to join us again next week. But until then, we want you to take care and stay safe. So from Tammy M0TC and her Lego. And my Lego, yep. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> and from me, David G7RP, with my active real London underground map. And from everybody at home as well, can we just have a quick look at we them? Can. Tammy, going to wave goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. And from Don, look there in Indianapolis, we've got more snow than they have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you ever so much to everybody for joining us and for the you at home as well. Do take care of yourselves. Stay safe. We'll see you next Wednesday, 7.30, for another NARP Live. Bye bye.